Welcome to Self Perfected. Cameron was tr- Cameron was trying to cancel me. You guys, if you can. Cameron tried to cancel me. If you tried to hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Cameron. It's, great. it's practically violence through the Zoom. Oh yeah, cancel cult. I'm offended. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm gonna censor my language. Guess what? What? Well, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people on live, which is probably there's no one yet. <laughs> but the people who listen afterwards will be able to guess. I want you to guess. I'll wait. Okay. Guess how many fathers are on this call? Did you say two? You'd be wrong if you did. How many are there, Drake? There's three fathers. Yes. Three fathers. The father. That is not just son, because. And the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and Drake did not get uh, ordained in the Catholic Church. <laughs> yes, and he does not have DID, if you missed last episode. Oh, man. Oh, Don't right. even get me started on DID. Because <laughs> that one, you could be multiple fathers. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no one here has DID that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> The current the current <laughs> altar that's fronting right now does not have DID. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> no, it's been really cool. Um, baby was born at Drake home. Had, Drake and Christine had a baby, by the way, everybody. Yes. Yes, we had a baby. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, you do something. We need we need we need full, we need some full volume of Drake. Hang on. Christine is not on video. I don't know why. She's probably busy with something. I have no <laughs> idea what, but she, she might be preoccupied, I guess. Yeah. So uh, real quick, before you go into any of that, um, what are you guys thinking? Daycare, school, what have you been looking at options? or? Yeah, so we were thinking. Hey, doesn't know, your family have a daycare? Yeah, we do. That's so convenient. You're going to be able to right. save some money because everything's right. about saving money, right? Everything's about saving money and, you know, just what's convenient for the parents, you know? And so... Uh, we were looking at that and we were like, yeah, you know, this would be so convenient. Just, you know, we, we could just leave our child with some random strangers. Well, technically they wouldn't be random strangers. They're still family. Some of them, there, there's better. a high turnover rate at the daycare. So um, you have a big family. <laughs> hey, did you see that Suzanne Venkner or whatever her name is video that I posted in the parenting group? Dude. Yeah. I, I sent you the first Suzanne Banker video. Oh, okay. I never watched Drake it. I actually I posted it. I guess I never saw it. I must have missed it because when I listened to it, I was like, man, that was like the same points you were making in the video that you made. Damn, Trick is just good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that point about like daycare was never meant to be a long term, like universal solution. It was like a last resort. Point yeah, for somebody who like had to obviously. So, so if you liked that oh. video, you should watch the full video that I that I sent because um, they go into even more depth and detail. And it's not just about like daycare. They also talk about like she talks a lot about when um, she, she she says like when when you're finding your partner, you know some of the things that you should consider are how much money do they make. You know, what do they do for work? Th- those sorts of things and what kind of lifestyle that you'll be able to have um, on this person's income. As a woman, that's what you should be looking at because if you're going into the relationship on two incomes and thinking you're going to have children and just, you know, live on two incomes, you're, you're goofing yourself. You're, you know, you're basically setting yourself up for- Even if you do put your kids in daycare. Right. And, and that was the other thing that she said, like, you know, you have to put the pen to paper, meaning like actually write out how much money do you think you're going to be making at this job? Okay. So you, you have a certain income, right? You pay some to taxes, this, that, whatever, right? But then, okay, how much money are you spending on daycare specifically? Then not just daycare, but daycare related things. Like you got to commute to daycare. You probably have to pay for food, or if not, you definitely have to pay for clothes for daycare because you're not going to wear the same thing. Like at home, 
you know, your, your child could wear the same thing for a week and nobody cares, right? At daycare, they start thinking like, hey, your child's been wearing the same clothes for the last week. They're calling CPS uh, on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. DCF, whatever, right? And and then, um, then on top of that, like you, you've got to commute to work. So you're spending money on gas just to go to work. Maybe you bought an extra car so that you could also go to work. Uh, you're spending money on clothes for work for sure. And then on top of that, you're also going to probably be spending a lot more money on eating out because you're not at home to uh, basically, you know, prepare meals and all those sorts of things. So when you tally up all that stuff and everything else related to it, you actually end up basically not, not making any money. Yeah. It's like you're, you're going to your job so you can like finance putting your kid in daycare essentially exactly exactly <laughs> it makes zero sense it doesn't make any sense and then the the okay so maybe you're thinking you know you know obviously people who listen to this podcast are not thinking this but you know if you're the average person you're thinking well no they can do a better job than me at daycare of taking care of my kid well <laughs> well <laughs> This is like, remember mass formation psychosis during the This COVID? is a mass formation psychosis. Yeah. This is a mass formation psychosis. And you know what, what's interesting about this is um, I started seeing that more clearly when I was reading the book, Hold On to Your Kids um, by Dr. Newfield and Gabor Mate, right? And they were just talking, and they weren't even trying to make this point against daycare. They were literally talking about peer orientation. And they were just making the point that, um, you know, daycare kind of came around or, or became really popular rather in the late 40s, 50s, World War II era, right? Because a, a whole bunch of men were now in the military and women were like needed in the factories and things like that. And so they brought these women into the workforce and they needed a place to put their kids, right? Um, and, and so it became this thing, really interesting, where it's just like, you can't talk shit about daycares. It's like, <laughs> which, because like, oh. Yeah, and I, I heard one point where she was saying also, like, with by the 70s, it was like totally accepted because of all the feminism stuff, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and the interesting thing about that is there's so many interesting, I think there's so many interesting things about that. Um, one being that, okay you're you're putting your kid in this daycare and maybe you don't want to say anything bad about it because then you're making somebody else feel bad who's in a position that they can't do anything about okay understandable right but then that doesn't it? <laughs> but it's not actually true like they can they could do something about it if they had like a long-term plan maybe they can't but what the but if okay let's say you're that person Okay, who like literally you're in a situation you can't do anything about it. Do you give a fuck about people trying to make you feel bad? Well, but like that, it's it, it's there's not nothing you can that. do. It, it's the people who could do it, yes, but are trying to justify all the other stuff, like the feminism points and all that, who don't want to experience their own guilt. It's the same point that comes up when people are like, Well, how can you say what's best for all? Like, you know, I think what's best for everybody is like an individual thing, and it's like that's just you not wanting to experience the guilt of like, I don't want to change and change the system and all yeah. that stuff. Like, I just want to say everyone can have their own opinion. By Same the way, thing with the religion. Like, I don't, I don't want to experience the cognitive dissonance and the guilt of not actually having thought really my, the conclusions of my beliefs and shit through. So I'm like, well, mm -hmm. everyone has, can have their own opinion. So by the way, go back, listen to episode eight, where we talk about like who decides what's best for all. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Who decides what's best. Right. Um, but also, spoiler alert, <laughs> it's us. <laughs> it's Drake. No, <laughs> but uh, but no, uh, that point about like religion as well as uh, you know, because I grew up very religious, but I also spent a lot of time actually focused on trying to understand why I believed what I believed, right. And really trying to get down to just the inner workings of my own mind and then what I was told and like what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. 
And I just, I, what's interesting is I did that on my own. Um, and I was able to come to, at least to the point where it was just like, a lot of this doesn't make sense, you know? And then for me, what was available to me at that time was just spirituality, you know? So that ended up, um, hang on, I got to force quit some stuff because laptop's like going. Over. Are you a Jedi now? I got to quit the force. You got to force quit. <laughs> I, I, yeah, he I, took I, spirituality to the ultimate and he's like, you know, reading those documents where like, oh my God, George Lucas, like actually based Star Wars off of these like, you know, spiritual things. You know the guys? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll see you. It was one of them. <laughs> Wait, what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I clearly didn't do my research. Uh, no, yeah, didn't studying. you read that in the Tao Te Ching where he talks about like, metachlorians and yeah yeah yeah. is that how you pronounce it you pronounce it tau teaching that's uh that is incorrect <laughs> that is that's worse how would you pronounce it tao te ching no, tao te okay look at it fucking, there you go. fucking great i pronounce it, I pronounce it andrew yang, <laughs> andrew yang. <laughs> I've, I've got... also I, i'm sorry i learned chinese phonics so <laughs> oh rough I, I, yeah. i've got it's been my... a rough life here we go <laughs> No, that's not it. I've got on my bookcase the Tao of Pooh. Tao of Pooh. You would have that. Well, yeah, no, it's, wow. it's Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> You're like, whatever. <laughs> it's pretty good. I enjoyed it the one time I read it <laughs> in a baby's room <laughs> um, while I was working at a daycare. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> one, one time I was working at a daycare, multiple times. I was working at a daycare, my family's daycare. Um, let me tell you some things that go on there. Um, I, I guess just to go back to that point of, uh, you know, daycare becoming popular, you know, like in the 50s and especially in the 70s, really picking up. Um, like that point of, it was just kind of acceptable. That, that's the, the mass psychosis going on there it, it would be like this is gonna sound racist but it's okay because i can say it is it okay because you're black yeah exactly that, that was racist too oh, oh now you're black yeah now right now for this Damn. moment just just to this moment okay um but uh it would be like you see someone sagging their pants right because in prison they had to sag their pants in order to not get beat the fuck up, right? And then they come out of prison, they continue sagging their pants. And so instead of recognizing like, that is something that you had to do to survive, it becomes the new fad. And then everybody sags their pants. And like, if you were to say anything about it, then you're a bigot for, for you know, not being accepting of all cultures and all people. You know, and you should be sagging your pants too. Like, I mean, I guess some people are privileged and you can have a fucking belt, you know, you don't have to sag your pants, but <laughs> that's, that's, that's basically what daycare is. Right. But it's worse. It's much worse. Right. It, it would mm -hmm. be like, I don't know. I, I said this somewhere else, but it would be like, you know, you, you chop off one of your hands or somebody is an amputee from a war or something like that, or from genetical disease, whatever. And then everyone goes around like, oh, everyone should chop off their hand, you know, just so we don't make that person feel bad. And like, what? How does that even How does that even make sense? You, you know what it's like, actually? It's like the circumcision thing. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's like everybody circumcises their kids because you're supposed to. And it's like better. But then you actually do the research and you're like, this is like a fucking scam, dude. This is weird. It's very weird. Yeah. I, I tried to get Cameron circumcised, but I just it's too late. Didn't you notice I already was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think they botched that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know at first glance it seems like nothing's missing, but <laughs> um, but yeah, nice. like it, that I mean that's a whole topic in itself. And I remember watching like a Stephen Molyneux presentation about it, and I was like dude what the fuck is the point of all this and then it's like people they would go into all kinds of stuff like it prevents cancer and shit and you're like what i remember hearing just all uh, the same 
It's like with you, the masks. You know, De- Prager, the guy, Dennis, Dennis Prager, Prager. He's like that, oh, yeah. yeah, like conservative guy, whatever. Yeah. I remember I was like, I, I found some of the Prager use stuff. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then in one of them, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm being Jewish. There was the ceremony of some, I don't know, some word for it. But it was like where my son got circumcised. And I was just so proud. I would, I would just, I was just overcome with this feeling of just joy of knowing like my son is now accepted by the religion or whatever. And he's like talking about feeling ecstatic. Just get like a tattoo. (laughs) Seriously, though. Like, yeah, I'm going to cut I, off yeah, part really, of your penis. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. crazy. Now, oh, and, and he's probably the same guy complaining about all these kids doing transgender. Right. It's, it's like definitely. they're just getting accepted into the next thing. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, we can't have these genital surgeries for children at such an unyang age. They can't make the decision for themselves. It's like, oh, but you'll cut off their fucking foreskin. Dude, somebody should tell them that. Somebody should really let these people. But again, know. remember going back to the religion thing, like not like being able to think it through and like. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, hey, that's, can I, yeah, go ahead. That, well, that, that was like we were talking a little bit about uh, before the podcast started about like how. Um, the difference between the techno tutor kids that are like actually understanding stuff and then the kids who just memorize things, which I'm guessing you'll get into with the periodic table um, and what Max has been doing. But it's like, it's just such a funny fucking predicament we find ourselves in. I mean, it's not really not funny, but you kind of almost laugh at the absurdity of it. It's like you have these people who are touted as experts and they're just, you know, the smartest people, thought leaders, whatever. But there's... N- it's they're really just reciting a script and they're not able to reason it out for themselves. And these are the same people that will happily say, Oh yeah, put your kid in daycare. It's not a big deal. Or, you know, chop their chop part of their dick off. And it's like really crazy because <clears throat> the people who are listening to this podcast, I'm sure you see it. It's like, you're the sane person in an insane world yet. The purpose is not to then be all happy about that. It's to go share it one by one. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. Um, especially just that point right there. Your purpose is not to be happy about like, oh, I understand this information. It's like, if you actually understood it, you would change it for others too. You would support others to understand it as well. Yeah. Um, because it's like, it would be like understanding that war is bad and then just being like then you like write books about war that become bestsellers and then program everyone with war (laughs) (laughs) or or, or you're just like you know war is bad and then you're like but i'm not going to tell anybody else you even let your your kids like grow up feeling like this glory for going to battle and war and you know all this it's like yeah but i i know within me it's bad you just got to come to that conclusion on your own. So there's a certain extent of that, of like, you got to run your own race, right? We, we were on the hangout on Friday and someone said, you got to run your own race, right? Like nobody else can run it for you. There is a certain extent to that. But at the same time, it's like, you can support others to get on the race track, to see that there's, you know, a race to be run even. And, and, and you can break the four minute mile to show them what's possible. Yes. And, and then to, to break down that like analogy of just like, it's just really walking this process, using the tools, joining the community and changing the world so that it is best for all. Is that simple? You know, that's the race, quote unquote. But you got you to gotta do it for yourself. Nobody else is going to do it. real race. Everyone nowadays talking about race, getting it all wrong. Yeah, this is the master race right here. This hey, that'd be a great name for this title. Oh, okay, we'll we'll put that to the side. Master race. All right, cool. I bet Cameron I'll, I'll likes consider it. it. You'll consider it. Deep down, Cameron is the most excited about that title. He just doesn't want to show it's a it. A little too on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i was kind of distracted i was trying to pull up some videos since we were talking about the chemistry thing so i realized there were some i hadn't done camera has to catch up on his on his netflix specials it's like oh 
Yeah. Fuck. They said crazy. I haven't I haven't watched Netflix, Netflix in years, man. Really? Yeah, I, don't, I haven't had missed, it for years. Missed out. You missed out. Cuties. Um, How many episodes of Black Mirror have you seen? <laughs> Three. No, four. Okay. All right. Four. Well, let's four? talk later once you've actually watched. Some. Okay, Mitch, watching Striking Vipers four times doesn't count. <laughs> if I, if we Yo, were to go into the meta so to the bad. data, you'd see that part where it's like most replayed, you know? And it's like that one scene and it's just like he's like playing it over and over. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have an image to go with this. Like I know you exactly. Seen, what, seen it? No, not that episode. No. I know exactly what you're talking about, but I'm like, oh yeah, but dude. Oh, so oh you're it. like the guy who's like, I know. Oh, Techno Tutor. Yeah, yeah, every, every program. I know exactly what you're talking about. You know. <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna get Professor me to watch Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. But you won't believe probably. it. I, 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 just after I heard about it, man. Even just hearing about it, like I'm getting such good results now, like. <laughs> You, sure, you're, okay. you're not gonna get me to watch it you're not gonna fucking get me to watch it i know Don't watch it because it will somehow indirectly program your daughter to just cringe herself it's just so fucking bad i re- I, I admittedly was like this is this what were the other it, know, it, me I thinks know. the lady doth protest too much <laughs> you're being a little bitch he says no no but, that's not what i'm saying it's yeah. like you seem a little bit trying to prove really proved to us that you didn't like it oh. Oh. <laughs> never mind hey i'm reading this book called hyperion you ever heard of it no I, i've heard of it but i never you guys are illiterate <laughs> um, it's... okay no, it, it, it's uh it's a book i've had for a while on my shelf i just never read it uh but it's by dan simmons it's from dude i had to look it up while i was reading it because like and I'm, i don't want to spoil it or anything but there's this one point in the book. It's it's kind of like people always describe it as like a modern Canterbury Tales. Okay. Because it's like people going on a pilgrimage, so to speak. And they're trying to go somewhere as this small group. And then they're each telling their stories. And there's a reason why and everything. But um, just that alone, I was like, eh, I don't know. Even though I like Canterbury Tales and when I read it in school, I was just like, I don't know, it doesn't sound like that cool or whatever. It's actually a really good book. Um, but there's one point where they're describing this guy he's like the military character and he's going and he's like in command school so he's like learning how to be a soldier i guess and they're putting him through all these simulations like his class where it'll be like they're at the battle of gettysburg or Agincourt, or uh you know like the tet offensive or something like all these like actual real historic battles and then he's just like a soldier in the battle and it's like a simulation okay like but when he's describing it, it's like he uh, it, there's like he knows he's in a simulation. He never forgets. But he's like there's points where it almost questions like is the point where I'm in school the dream or is this the dream? Like is this the which one is real? Because it's so realistic. It's like super you know high realistic. And I had to look it up because the way it was described without going into the detail, like the way he it was described how he was experiencing himself and everything and the language around how how it was described i was like when the fuck was this book written i went back and looked and it was 1989 and i was like because normally if you read a book from the 80s about vr or something like that it sounds very outdated like if you ever read william gibson you know it's like cyber decks and like all this different stuff and it's those are good books too but it just it was the language it makes it sound like outdated yeah yeah. um but the way they describe this i was like man this is it's as if somebody were today with all of the knowledge today describing kind of like the near future of vr it it was it's so anyways really good and i mean i'm I'm, I'm only like not even a fifth of the way into the book i like when authors really do their research and they're like they go and study like whether it's like history or they study like like what's the latest technology and where it's going and all of that. And then they like include that in the way that they write. Like Neil Stevenson does a really good job of that. Like, yeah. And uh, you know, you know, um, Otherland, how yeah. it's the way it describes everything. It's like very believable in terms of, yes, that's how this is. Although it predates Otherland by some time, yeah, yeah. Or whatever, but it's yeah. very similar, like how it describes everything. 
yeah. um, the, the way that other land is written like even if the words aren't exactly correct it's like it draws you in <laughs> like it's it's dude it's but on... they they use the word netflix which oh, was that's weird true. yeah that is true. they they called it netflix and um he also uses um oh no he doesn't use it but he ref that's how i that's how i realized it. it was he refers to the tiktoks i remember him referring because he talks he has like a wizard of oz simulation right oh that's right that's, yeah. right. that's how i originally knew about it so i was like man is this where tiktok got its name from and then i read wizard of oz like i forget which oh it's one of the books called tiktok of oz in the series and then there's yeah. a character called tiktok who's like a robot i'm like i wonder if that that's an influence on them naming it that way i don't know maybe maybe to make you into a robot here here's your tiktok it's so crazy i was uh this past week i went and i got this like private tour of this vr lab around here and i had gone to an event there maybe three months ago actually a long time ago damn time flies what if, um, what if you never left what if you, you know i'm falls? starting to this whole time i remember is this the dream or was that the dream and D i i get why they get did now you just got fucking systems within you you know i'm like fronting backing and i gotta add that vocab to my tt <laughs> but anyway i think anyway. they call it b i think they call it bottoming yeah i think that's it you, you should always tell people you should tell people if they ever ask you about the idea that you're the bottom that's that's the uh part. <laughs> i really like bottoming <laughs> i like fronting you know just the fucking system <laughs> so anyways about this vr lab so it's interesting because they have these it reminded me of you know how you ever go to top golf where they have like different bays where you can go and then you like drive it's like driving range kind of but then it was like that but you're like you a thousand could... feet in the air <laughs> no 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 this is like in real world okay no and no you but look... I'm saying, isn't isn't top golf you're like way up high <laughs> oh kind of kind of yeah i've actually never I don't know. top, top so... golf golf kind of overrated it's not that fucking fun i don't know it's, it's fun it, i mean it looks cool it, to me with I mean, with, with the right group of people it'd actually be fun i just have just gone with not the right group of people but anyway okay so you got these people in their vr like plug-in things and then they're like running around it, it was just really funny to watch these people because they're just like in the zone doing their thing um but then the thing that was really the most it, there's two parts that was really interesting to me one was uh, so the guy who runs it, he has like a proprietary software thing where they can make a space for you. And then instead of like meeting on Zoom, you could all have your little character thing. And then you could have like, let's say self-perfected podcast, uh, podcast land. So then it's like us four get private access to the podcast studio. And then everyone outside, they could like tune in. So instead of um, watching us on Zoom they could be their own little avatar character in there, like watching us live. And we could be like, you know, switch. you could like switch it to look like you're in freaking medieval times when we're talking about medieval stuff and the future when we're talking about the future. And, and it's, it was, it was pretty fascinating because I was telling him, I was like, yeah, on Fridays we do this hangout with this, with our groups, you know, and I told him a little bit about it. I was like, what would that even look like? He's like, yeah, you could literally just go to this way. It's called Simulacra, by the way, <laughs> which is interesting. And you just type in. He's like, yeah, and it would, it would, if it's not customized, it's literally free. You just get your own access code, and then everyone could come on there. And you can, there's like general settings, but then you could have it where you have to be close to each other to hear each other. Or, so it's kind of like a a real event where you, like at the self perfected event, right? You got to like walk up to the person to hear them. But then other people could have, their sound over the intercom so I was, I, my mind just started racing with like holy shit this is like the thing i was thinking about for years i'm like this is actually like the thing that'd be kind of I, I could so he was saying that they partnered with like target and all these other corporations that have their headquarters here and he said at the target one at first they let everybody wear whatever avatar stuff they wanted they could customize their outfits and like it became way too big of a distraction so now they can either wear a target sweatshirt with the khakis or like one of the a, dist a distraction from what 
<laughs> I don't fucking know. From the important target discussion? <laughs> like, what is there? That, what are they talking about? You know, putting Satan on their t-shirts and shit like that. Yeah, and, yeah. How to, on, how on, to make on, sure on. that they've transferred. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Let me just get this right. Let me get this right. So everybody getting to choose all their crazy outfits was a distraction in the virtual target. <laughs> but if you go to an actual target... There's like fucking pride displays, women's clothing in the men's section. I'm like, <laughs> what? It's not a but, but they're like, well, in the, in the virtual world, you know, we can't let people have choice and express themselves and all that stuff. Right? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. So it's so funny. Like, we're trying so, to get work done but, here. Yeah, but then he was saying um, how like there's a more advanced version that is out there and that they're working on totally the generative AI thing. So like real time, you could be like, hey, you know, I want this uh, building to look like Gothic architecture. And I, you know, want to be a unicorn and be able to fly around. And it's like instant, it changes your world and how you're seeing it. So that's going to be fascinating, because I'm sure Zoom is working on something like this. So, you know, all these companies for the quote unquote future of work are going to have that. So that was that was interesting to me. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing would you say? Yeah, probably. So probably I go and acquire one of these. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing was um, he was talking about how these kids that are like really into Roblox or Minecraft or whatever the fuck the kids are doing nowadays. And he had this sweatshirt that was, I don't know if they, it was gifted to them or whatever, but it was like some Nike sweatshirt. It was like one out of a thousand were made. And on the back, it looked like a, a cool design, but it doubled as a QR code. And so you could open Snapchat and you could uh, look at it on Snapchat and it looked like these giant like robotic angel wings were like flapping from it. But then he's like, yeah, soon enough, everyone will have their glasses or they'll just have an implant. And then now it's like, that's actually what they're seeing is that it's, it's like indistinguishable from, you know, yeah. which one's the metaverse, which one's the real one. And it, hang on, hang on. It got so crazy because he's like, yeah, these kids nowadays, though, they just because he's like, yeah, look, feel this part of the sweatshirt. There's a chip in here that has an NFT proving it's one of the th sweatshirts. But he's like, the kids nowadays don't even want the real sweatshirt. They just want to make sure they have access in the metaverse for their friends. And he's called it the, the phrase is digital self-expression so that they care more about, you know, their skin and the metaverse and what they look like. And then he said, yeah, with the kids nowadays, last year there was, I forgot how many billions were spent on these skins, but it's like, you know, you let's say you're playing Minecraft with your buddies or whatever. We have our version of the metaverse and it's like, you could pay extra to have this edition or you could pay extra for this. That's this whole fucking economy and everything. And it's, it's, it's really, it's really wild. And like he was saying to Starbucks. So like a big, a big issue he has seen is that some of these companies will throw out these buzzwords like metaverse, cryptocurrency, blockchain. But he's like, the really good companies don't use those because there's too much resistance by the mainstream. So like Starbucks uses blockchain and uses NFTs in their loyalty program, but they don't call it that. They just call it their loyalty program. Or like Apple during their mixed uh, Apple Vision Pro debut, they said they didn't use any of the terms metaverse or anything, just spatial computing. Right. And he he said for years he'd been calling it spatial computing because he thought pe people got too tripped up by the word metaverse. And so anyway, he's like, yeah, it's going to get to a point soon where people either got the glasses, the contacts, they aren't even using a phone, and you'll be outside and you could walk down the street and you could either be tuned into normal reality or you could say, hey, I want all the trees here to be palm trees. In real time, it will switch them. And so like it's going to get really fucking insane. That's in the next so few interesting years. because like, you know, I'll, I'll see a lot of kids who are like four years old or so and their parents will give them tablets, which that's stupid. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> but they spend all their time on their tablet watching somebody play the game Roblox. And they're literally like, like they're, they're so immersed already in this virtual ro world and, and they just have a, a tablet in their hand and, and they're just like their face is like this close to the tablet right and and they're like they, they're just running around in this virtual world or pretending that they're running around 
And especially at that age, it's like it, you actually really feel like you're in that world, right? But then on top of that, um, I saw uh, I saw on Facebook, this mom was talking about how her kids, she said one of her kids watched this video. That, she said one of her kids asked her, hey, mom, if we stay in this circle for two and a half hours, will you give us $2? And they created like a little circle of like with a blanket, a circle around the chair. And they were like, if we stay in the circle for two, two and a half hours, will you give us $2? And it was because they had watched a video online where contestants were like, you know, they had to stay in a specific place or, or, you know, not move off of their square or whatever in order to win a prize. And I'm guessing it was probably like a Mr. Beast video or something like that, because they do that a lot. And, um, and then on top of that, they had like these little mini games that they would play. So it was literally the son and the daughter had their own circles and one of the, they're playing these mini games and whoever loses the mini game has to throw one of their toys out of the circle. And she said, oh, you know, they're having so much fun doing this. And they've been in there for hours, much longer than I expected. But they're trying to go all day and, and see who's going to win uh, th this $2 or whatever. And I looked at that and I was like, fuck. Like, that was literally, they just watched a video. And these kids had to be like, I don't know, seven and five, somewhere around there, I would assume. Right. But like, they literally watched a video online and their you know their impulsed with this is what i want to do this is how i'm going to make money you know and, and that like they spent their entire day just playing that game and there's nothing wrong with kids coming up with creative games but they didn't come up with this they, they literally just saw it and they're like yeah that's that's what i want to do with my time and so they're they're spending their time like how long can I get paid or how long can I stay here so I can get paid to do something of no value? Yeah. You know? And, and so it's like, okay, combine that with kids are, are that influenceable, you know, plus the, the Roblox thing where kids are already, they watch somebody else just play through a game and they listen to their commentary and like, yeah, I love this. You know, and, and like I watch these things and I'm like, I guess I get it, but I'm, I'm not going to spend more than two minutes watching one of these things, you know, but like kids have been into watching other people play video games for years now. And that's becoming more and more of a thing. And it, it's really interesting with like Roblox, Roblox, because it's like these things don't, the graphics are not great. They're not great graphics, you know, but then it really does look like metaverse graphics is basically the same thing only you're just not wearing it yet yeah yet. you know and so I, I see that being very enticing to the next generation you know our generation may look at it and like you said you know th there's a lot of resistance to blockchain or you know metaverse or whatever our, our generation we're a little bit older we're like okay what the fuck is the point of that but the kids that are growing up right now it's not going to be something that's like foreign to them. To them, it's just going to be like, finally, you know? Yeah. And, and even the point about the resistance to those words, what I was seeing is it's like they put that, those words out there so that they can, they know there's going to be resistance because it's something that's new. And then, but it's now it's in everybody's mind. And so now when you see an MNFT, or something, even though it's not called that, you'll be more accepting of it because it's like now it's put into the consciousness, especially for like the older people, you know, the older generations. Um, you know, I just had this realization the other day when I was a kid. I don't remember when exactly. I can't remember where I was. I'm going to guess I was like maybe third or fourth grade. Maybe third grade, something like that. And I remember watching on TV some kind of show. I want to say it was like on C-SPAN or some kind of thing like that. It was some kind of, uh, I don't know if it was like a, like a presentation 
to the Senate, like a Senate hearing, or if it was more like a TV show. I can't remember exactly what the context was, but it was Al Gore. And he was talking about the information superhighway. And this was before we had even like AOL and stuff, right? And, and I just remember that the other day, it was like playing in the, on the TV at my grandparents' house. And I just remember like picking up on it, you know? And then I remember how he was like the one who did like the whole inconvenient truth and all that. Yeah. And I was like, this, they use this guy to like take concepts and like put them into the consciousness. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Right. I, I need to go look that up. Like what was that movie or whatever? That's fascinating. Cause in, in the, uh, in the whole John Taylor Gatto, like five hour underground history thing, he explains that. Well, actually maybe it was John Kerry who he was saying, but the, uh, when it's like the skull and bones put forth both the Republican and the Democrat. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, like, and that's, that's also fascinating too. In that book, I'm, I'm, I'm reading uh, what it takes by Stephen Schwartzman. I think I said this last week and he explains, cause he went to Yale and he had heard about all these different groups and then, but you had to like qualify. And he, mm. he was the one who got, what was it? He got the, uh, it used to be a boys only school. And he was the one who like put it all together to actually end that policy and get women there. And that's when he got accepted to join school. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, you know how to yeah, do it. That is interesting. <laughs> They're like, great. <laughs> yeah. Um, well. I was going to tell you about this game. I think I mentioned it before that we've been playing me and Max and Seneca like every few nights or whenever. Uh, called Roblox? Space Kim. It's called Space Kim. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, it's here. I'll actually, actually I'll just show you. Let me look at it. So you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Um, space camera. Um, let me find like an actual. Here's one. I'll just I'll just turn the audio off on it. But it's basically a game that you could say it's based on chemistry. You don't necessarily need to know chemistry. But you have oh that's a little intense. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, you said it's this. Uh, oh, I huh? think it's base camp. I'll just do one like this. Okay. I showed you this before. We're gonna watch a video of like one of those original streamers who's like, oh, he's like playing space cam. And uh, like, yeah, it's just people like making like tutorials <laughs> or whatever. But basically, you have to like you have to take all these little pieces and arrange them on these grids, and you have inputs and you have outputs, and basically, it's like you have to basically create a program. See, like this one, for example, when this little circular thing, you see this like thing that's got like the breaks in it, right? There's a blue one and a red one. It starts on that button. And when you push play, it'll move along the track in the direction of these arrows. And like when it says in alpha, that'll pull in like one of these chemicals, whatever is in the input. And then you have commands like you can grab that chemical. And then what it'll do is it'll follow it along the track. And so it's like you're designing an industrial process to, um, let me see if I can skip forward to one when they're actually doing it. Let's see. Here's one. So he see how it's like moving it along and then it drops it off over here and just output. And so these are just different examples. And then you have like all these different reactors that produce different chemicals. And so you have some kind of chemical you start with or chemicals, and then you either have to bond them together or break them down, rearrange them, and then output them and send them to other things, maybe to reassemble them in other con you know ways. And then that would output it to something else, right? And see here, it's making hydrogen and ethane. And so you can get kind of complex um, because you have to figure, I mean, it's, it's actually a pretty challenging game. And so we've been playing this game and uh, cause I had seen it like many years ago. And so I just thought it'd be cool. Like Max would like it. Right. And it's fascinating too, because there'll be times where like, we'll play it together at, like in the evening and I'll like put a little button and I'll put maybe like, you know, like there'll be like a grab button or a drop button. And I'll maybe I'll put the wrong thing because you have to click it and assign it and everything. And Seneca's, and, and I'll move on to something else. And Seneca will be like, 
no, 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 that needs to be a drop. And she'll start explaining why. So she's like right, four and a half or almost five. She's like sitting there and she's paying. So she like wants to be with us, like watching. And we're all like, kind of like trying to figure it out. Cause they're, they're sometimes pretty difficult puzzles. Like on the surface, you look at it and it's like, oh, what's the big deal? But it gets really complex You have because the, the chemicals can't run into each other. So like if you grab a hydrogen and the other one's got one and they hit it, it stops the program. So it's like a physical process, right? So it's a really mm -hmm. cool game. And I had shown the game to Max like maybe two weeks ago, I'm guessing. I don't remember. But now that got him wanting to know more about chemistry because he's seeing like oh we're creating like an ethane molecule so then he, and then we also have a periodic table that's like in one of those like reference study sheets you know those laminated things we've talked about right so we've had that for a while and every once in a while he would look at it but not like that much like he would look every once in a while he would kind of know something was on there but since we started playing that game he's suddenly very interested and he wants like a chemistry set and he's like trying to mix chemicals at home, like baking soda and vinegar and like other things and try to figure stuff out. Right. And he keeps talking to us about wanting a chemistry set. All right. He wants to make his own chemistry lab. And he's always talking now about like making different chemicals and stuff like that and, and, and making, you know, new elements and discovering elements. And he was telling me he wants to be, he wants to find some francium because it's the most rare element on the earth. And even if he has like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, it would be worth so much money and all this stuff. So he's like playing with all these concepts. And I was bringing that up kind of in juxtaposition of that story you were telling about those kids, where it's like the parent is just allowing them to just be entertained by whatever and not yeah. even really looking at what is the context here yeah. or what's the consequence of it rather. And it's normal for children to, when they're impulsed by something, it's, it's like it becomes a part of them they want to play it out right and so if we would watch some kind of little cartoon or something now the kids are playing as those characters or like specifically when we read books like Seneca keeps running around calling herself Scarlet and she had written like an S on her on her chest and like had like taken a marker because uh Caius got into like one of the washable markers and he like comes into the kitchen and he's got like marks all over his face from one of the marshable markers and she sees that, and I and I, and I kind of made a comment. I said, "Isn't that funny? It looks like Caius is putting is wearing makeup, right?" Mm -hmm. And Seneca like got this idea, and she took the markers and started making marks on her face as if it was makeup. Mm -hmm. And then she was pretending to be Scarlet, right? And I was like, "Why Scarlet? Like, where are you getting that from?" And it was this crayon. It was like a Crayola coloring book that was like that we got from the Kubota store, or like the Kubota dealership or whatever. Yeah. And so it's got like crayons using Kubota equipment. <laughs> it's like, there, there's even one page where they're playing softball and it's like the Crayola crushers versus the Kubota, whatever, I forget what they call them or whatever. And so it's like Kubota versus Crayola, right? It's a silly thing, right? Yeah. But but the all the Crayolas have names like Periwinkle or whatever, you know? So one of them is Scarlet, and that's where she got that idea to be Scarlet. And I was like, why did you want to be Scarlet? And she goes, because Scarlet's the girl, right? And so just the point is, even something simple like that, the kids didn't want to take that on. Like when we read Wizard of Oz, they wanted to be Dorothy and Toto and the Wizard and the Lion and all these different characters all the time, right? So even the games that we exposed them to were very specific about it. Like I won't expose Max to, to Minecraft. Hmm. You know, like, I'm sure he would love it. I'm sure he would enjoy it. But I also know all of the other stuff that's in it. And there's like other stuff that's like zombies and all this other crap. And like, um, and the marketing and the branding around it. Every time we would go to Walmart or a store, he would see probably like the Minecraft toys. And he'd want to buy them because of the impulse within all of that. And I know right. how much that's manipulated, right? So we're very specific with these points. But it's interesting because we're not saying you can't ever play any games. And that, that Space Game game did like, um i was making some chamomile tea last night for everybody and we had agreed okay we'll play some of the space game tonight and max was like getting it set up and i was like if you want you can start going on it and while i'm making the tea and so he's over there and he's like figuring out how to solve the problem and everything and i'm like i mean his reasoning ability is just like insane um but it's just really cool too because then suddenly he's got this interest in chemistry and katie had um um, shared some videos on 
uh, I think it was like on her Instagram or something, maybe. I'm assuming that's where it was, right? Yeah. And so I thought I would share some of those because, so this is like, he has this periodic table reference sheet. And then I gave him a chemistry book, like a high school chemistry book, all right? So those are his two references. And I've been down, I, I have in the past downloaded chemistry videos and things like that for them. So he's I got those on his computer. So I'm sure he's watched a few of those. And I mean, like videos on stoichiometry and stuff, like videos on Lewis dot structures, you know, like not like, hey kids, chemistry time. Like, no, like an actual like chemistry tutorial video that you just come in the room and the, it's like when it's their computer time, you'll see them both like watching this video on, you know, molecular orbital theory or something. And they're just sitting there like watching it and then they're talking about it. Yeah. So I was going to share some of these videos. Um, they're not that long. One of them says 10 minutes, but I'm not going to play the whole thing. But I just wanted to show you guys something really cool. So this was just the other day. It starts off with me commenting that Max has spaghetti sauce because I think on his face, because I think we had just eaten dinner, maybe. That's what it looks like. There's lasagna on the table. Um, but I was going to share this one real quick. Okay. Your face is covered in sauce. <laughs> it's okay. I right. saw what's my first one? CO2. Oh, I'm done shorting me. Like this time. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. He, he, he didn't want me to tell him the formula. I made a mistake. I was I meant to say carbon dioxide. So that's why he was like, wait, wait, wait. you're supposed to tell me the name and I give you the formula, right? Beautiful. Water. No, I mean you are telling me the name. Yeah, I know, but I'm switching it. Water. Nice. Okay. Very nice. Um, how about carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide. I've got more. I've got. Like I know. This. I'm just starting out simple. Carbon dioxide. Yeah. That's really easy. Carbon monoxide. Carbon dioxide. Okay. Um, what about ammonia? Ammonia. That's easy. You don't actually need very much for that. Only one of these nitrogens. Hydrogen. Well, okay. What about acetylene? Acetylene. What about propane? Propane. Oh, now I need to move. See, I need to move. So now I need four to make propane. Are you sure? Or do I need one? Because three equals three. Let's try two. Let's see what three is. No, I'm not guaranteeing that this. Okay, that's fine. Just do your best. Okay. What is four though? That's ethane, right? Mm -mm. Well, whatever it is. So I'm just gonna test this. See if it's. Okay. And even if it's not what I'm looking for, I'll still show you it. That's fine. That like we'll it. see what it is. Mm -hmm. Woo! Propane. Propane, nice. So, what do you think four is? Uh, I think it's ethane. Mm -mm. But you can try. Um, I mean, dude, dude, he knows ammonia. He knows acetylene. He knows all that stuff off the top of his head. That's insane. And and, and this is what I want people <laughs> to take away from it is, even though they can't see this part of it, we're not. I'm not sitting down teaching him. This is carbon dioxide. This is ammonia. It's like he's reading it in things, and and a lot of those uh, he saw in space skin. So he's like, remembers because he was working with it like, oh, yeah, ammonia, that's the NH3. I remember that. That's how he knew about acetylene. Right. So I'm asking one ones, obviously, that I know he knows. And then I ask him the propane one because I know those ones he had just learned that morning. So he got propane and butane mixed up. That's why he said four. And that's why I said, are you sure? I didn't tell him the answer. And then he was like, oh, actually, maybe it's three because he still he was he literally had just heard about those that morning. Um, like the, the uh, what they call alkanes, right? So I wanted to share that. And then let me see, there was another one. Hold on one second. 
Has he done those word any of those words specifically through his Techno Twitter? He's done some of them. Uh, oh, here's the other that one. That is so cool. But what's cool is his natural learning ability is staying open. So it's like right. he can integrate words. And so what I did the other day is so he's not, I mean, this won't matter mean much to most people other than well, I guess if you're watching this podcast, it probably means something to you. But um he's just he's one list. Actually, he'll be done this morning because it's the last list. He's he's he'll be done now today with level four. Wow like going through everything step by step on his own. This is from the beginning on his own, okay, wow. in TT. And uh, anyway, so I created some custom lists for him of all the elements in the periodic table. So I don't remember how many ended up being. We ended up doing it into like groups of 12 or something like that. And he was like, cool. And I was like, do you want to do some of these first and then finish level four with that last list? Or do you want to do that one first? So he decided how he wanted to do it, right? Um, so I'll just show another uh, short one real quick. How fucking cool would that be as a kid doing this? Okay, so I'm wondering how many people remember this stuff from chemistry. Obviously, eight protons. So he's, he's, he has to put in here how many protons, neutrons, electrons based on the chemical symbol, right? There has to be 10 electrons if it were to have a two minus charge. And of course, if it has a 16, and that's eight, it probably also has eight neutrons. And then it says trick. Okay, so let me back it up for a second. I'll explain for those who don't have the context. Like, you know, Drake, uh, have you ever you ever, you ever tutored chemistry much? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. You have. I used to tutor chemistry. Um, and even stuff like this would trip up high schoolers. Oh, yeah. You know, like the really smart ones, probably not. But like the average chemistry student would be like, like, and they would spend a week talking about this shit. And by the end of it, they'd still make mistakes on it. Right. And so what this is showing you is it's the chemical symbol for oxygen. This bottom number, the eight, it's called the atomic number. It tells you how many protons there are, which makes it unique to every other element. Every other every element has a unique number of protons. If you change the number of protons, it's a different element. The number of neutrons can vary, but that's where this 16 comes in. It's called the mass. And so that's the neutrons plus protons. Okay. And then the negative two is not always on this, this symbol. It is, I guess, if it's an ion, which means it's missing or it has extra electrons. And in the case of this one, it says two minus, which means it has its 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 charge is negative by two charges. So it must have two extra negative charges. So just from this information, he was able to reason out it has eight protons, eight neutrons. So think, look how quickly he knew eight plus eight is sixteen. Yeah. And then also ten plus uh, sorry, eight minus ten is negative two. So all of that he was ha had to be able to do, not only understand what each of these things means, but to be able to do the math very quickly. And so there's not a lot of math there other than addition, subtraction. But can you see how having a firm grasp on those basic points allows you to, in to do this very quickly? Now, imagine you're in high school and you never really integrated positives minus negatives, negatives minus positive, negative minus negative, all that stuff how that would kind of bog you down. So even something simple like this, you'd be like, you'd be uncertain. There's no, you can see there's no uncertainty. And even on that other video where I showed where he wasn't sure about what was propane, you notice how he was like, well, even if this isn't the right one, it's fine, I'll test it out. Like he didn't care that it might be wrong. Right. You see that versus like, oh, well, I, I don't know. Tell me what it is. You know, like he didn't have that uncertainty or that, that lack of self-confidence. Right. And so it's cool because, what we're showing with TechnoTutor is you you start with the basics and you build that in. And the reason why people have so many problems later on is because the foundation stuff is not in there effectively. So like addition, subtraction, whatever. And then in chemistry, everything builds on itself. So later on, you need to be able to quickly identify how many protons does this have or neutrons, like without thinking about it. But if you couldn't even integrate that, it's going to like build up to frustration later where it's like, I just, so it's like, do you ever have that experience in high school when you're in a subject? 
and you get to a certain point, like maybe months in or weeks in, where you're just like, this is so overwhelming. It didn't maybe start that way, but at a certain point, it's just like, oh, I just can't fucking do this. It's yeah. too much. It's because of the foundational points are not in there properly. What are you gonna say? I was just gonna what is y'all's take on this? Yeah. There's so many kids right now that I'm seeing firsthand that cannot do the basic, like adding a positive and a negative number. Like literally, or or you know, adding or subtracting a negative number from a positive number that's greater than the positive number. I know I just lost some people just by saying it that way, you know, but like there's so many kids today that cannot do that very basic thing. And they're like, uh, is it like, is it like negative one? Is it like negative eight? Like, is it positive? Wait, is it supposed to be negative or positive? Like they have that uncertainty, you know, like even just um, like 17, minus nine you know I've, I've seen high schoolers with you know 17 minus nine and then you know they like cross out the seven and bring over the one and now they have 17 minus nine and they're like fuck it's the same thing <laughs> they're like this is minus nine like how, how do you not how is that not like automatic in your head you know it's just why don't you just subtract 10 and then subtract one again? Like, that doesn't, <laughs> you know, like subtract and add one. I mean, add one. Like, then how do you not get this? And, and so it's simple things like that that people take for granted. And, and people just think, like, oh, well, they just don't know this one little thing. But then that that becomes a that's like the the pebble in the shoe, you know, where it's like, oh, it's just a little pebble in the shoe. Like, you have that in there all day, you're gonna be fucking hurting yeah you're trying to run a marathon (laughs) yeah exactly well exactly exactly um it's it's cool do do you have the other videos of uh oh yeah yeah. because what what was interesting when i was looking at that little chart and it showed oxygen with the o and the numbers and everything it's like i remember it i I could see how you could find a lot of joy in that as a kid because it's like fun because you're like learning things and you're like oh that's oxygen you like you know it and then there's all the other elements. And it reminded me of when I was a kid and I would get things like Pokemon cards. I'm mm. like, oh, yeah, that's Pikachu. And I'm like pumped about like knowing that thing. Right. But it had nothing to do with fucking reality. Right. Whereas with Max and these other kids, it's like their enjoyment of learning, of knowing things is now grounded in reality. Where these other kids, it's getting hijacked by, you know, Disney characters and shit. So that's, that's exactly I, what I was trying to show. Cause it's like, I didn't want, because people, if you haven't thought about this, it's not obvious, but when Drake was talking about, you know, you're getting impulsed by this stuff, you're going to get impulsed by whatever's in your environment. Yeah. Period. And then the kids are going to act that out. So it's not like, Oh, look, they got brainwashed and now they're acting this out. It's like, that's just normal. To, for, that's how you, that's how you learn to speak. You're impulsed by all these words. And then you start acting it out. It's literally how you learn English. Right. Um, and so we're just specific with what our kids are exposed to. And yeah, a lot of times they don't like it because it's like, you know, um, maybe we go to like the store and then they see like some Disney character stuff and they're like, Oh, what's that? Can, can we get that? Or can we watch that? And then we explain to them, well, here's what it is. And here's why we don't watch that. Like, here's what it impulses. You know, and it's funny because a lot of times Seneca will be like, oh, it, it's not impulsing. It's not impulsing. She'll say that because it's like trying to, you know, but I'm like, well, but let's talk about what impulsing means, right? She understands now. Um, so it's not about whether it's impulsing, about what is it impulsing, right? All right, let me show this one more quick. So this one was one Katie did. So I think this is from like. You said a lot of times they don't like it. Yeah, just meaning like the way that these things are marketed they have like the cartoon character with the big eyes, like it is attractive to children. So when I say they don't like it, what I mean is like, they, they don't like that. We're saying no, Mm -hmm. we are explaining ourselves, but that doesn't mean they're just like, Oh, okay. Like, I mean, they, they, what it, so it really shows how much the environment like um, impulses the point. And so it's not about fear. It's like with Seneca, 
when we go grocery shopping, sometimes just me and her, her will go run errands. And like, I think I've talked about this before, but we'll go look at the cereal and I'll ask right. her, which ones do you think are for kids and which ones are for adults? Right. And she asked me like, well, what's, what's the, what's the car, what's the commercial about that one about, you know, like we, we were getting some the other day at the store and she goes, she goes, what is, um, what is the story of Frosted Flakes? Cause she saw like the Tony, the tiger thing. So I was explaining to her like the whole, they're great. And like how he says that and everything. Right? And she goes, but, but does he try to get the cereal from the kids? Right. Cause she knows that's what happens in a lot of them. Right. Yeah, but she yeah, knows yeah. from an understanding, not from a having been impulsed by it. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me does, share. Does he try to get the cereal? Does, does he get the cereal? You, you know, what's funny is I was telling Christine the other day, cause we were looking at some chemistry stuff and I was like, I don't even remember my chemistry classes like mm -hmm. that is just a blank space in my brain like and space it was chem it's space chem. yeah but I, I remember like because uh I was going to school for a magnet program and part of our program was you had to take chemistry you had to take physics and there was one semester regardless of like whether you were going to test into physics or, or like you know get uh college credit for it or whatever regardless of that you had to take at least one semester of physics and one semester of chemistry and uh in the 10th grade and um they were basically the same semester so or the same period of of school so the first semester i remember walking into the chemistry class and she was like oh somebody's not supposed to be here and she like went through the entire uh, roster and she didn't call my name and I was like what she's like no you're supposed to be in the physics class this semester I'm like oh okay so I go to the physics class and I remember that entire physics class I slept through the class like it was just after lunch the classroom was like facing a, a, like I had a huge window facing the sun and it's just like so warm it was beautiful it was perfect the the uh, physics teacher had this perfectly monotone voice that was like a lullaby that was just like lulled me just like I literally sat at the desk in front of his desk and literally would wake up drooling on his desk like just drooling he'd be like uh so uh you think you're gonna do well in this class I'm like listen you uh you have a beautiful voice and I love it so much it just just lulls me in and he's like that is the nicest way anyone's ever told me I have a monotone voice but then the next semester it was the same period I just and I, I think I was awake during chemistry I just don't remember the class at all like at all I remember Avogadro's number <laughs> that's it moles that's it <laughs> um but yeah, the, yeah okay let me let me like let me address that point. Even the concept of moles, yeah. Trying to explain that to a high schooler, they're like, they <clears throat> they can't process it. Yeah, yeah. Right, which is like, it's the same thing as saying a dozen. You know what I mean? Like, meaning it's not the same number. But like, if I said what's a dozen, you make oh, it's twelve things. But as soon as I say a mole of atoms, they're like. Uh, I'm like it's it's the same thing. It's just a number, but because it's such a big number, and they use scientific notation to write it, six point oh two two times to the twenty third, right? Yeah. They're like it, it it because all that stuff, all the numbers and everything isn't integrated, so they just memorize things. So when these, it's like you cannot process it; it doesn't become a part of you. You yeah. know, it's like with Max when you're watching, all these things are becoming a part of him. So it's just like working with something that's that you're familiar with, right? Scientific notation is another thing that's just like not understood at all. And it's it's one of those things that like- And it uses exponents, which is another thing that children have trouble with, right? Right, right. And so because a lot of adults don't get it, when their kids don't get it, they're like, okay, no, no big deal. And, and, but it's like, you actually, it's, so, it's such a simple concept. It's such a simple concept. And it's actually useful in many different contexts but it's like I had a, a parent tell me one time, and obviously this parent is not very intelligent, but she told me, like, I don't care if my kid's able to do algebra. 
I've never had to use it. And I was like, the fuck you haven't? Like, <laughs> you clearly don't understand what algebra is. Like, you have to use that all the time. You, like, if you're going grocery shopping, you're using algebra. You just don't realize it, you know? Like, it, and when I was asking her, like, just really simple, basic questions, she's like, I, I, I can't do that stuff. And I, I don't care if my kids can do it either. Like, oh, it's because you can't do it. You don't see the value of it. But it's actually, like, those things, it's not that it's like, oh, you, you should, everybody should know how to separate X from, you know, whatever, find the value of X for blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's more so if you can do that, you can do so much more. There's so much more that you can do with that. Well, here's the real point though. Like, why can't you do it? Yeah. Why, if I sit and explain it to you at, from the beginning, the basics, why can't you just be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can't because there's like a resistance. Yeah. So the reason why the kids have resistance to certain subjects is because well, the no, words are not in them. No, so, some people just get it and some people don't. Everybody learns differently, you know? Like some people were just born to be idiots, I guess. And in yeah. some aspects, not all aspects, just some aspects. Every, nothing was pre-programmed into you in terms of even learning how to walk. And yet somehow you were born with the ability to do math. Yeah. Um, here, let me share this one. Because Even that logic right there goes over a lot of people's heads. Is that funny? Okay, so here's uh, there's a few videos. They're like a minute long, or whatever. Yeah, these are. But this is or not even. Can you see it? Yep. Uh, so it's Katie. Well, I think she explains it clearly, but I think she's asking him some chemistry questions. So I haven't watched all of these yet. Max is ready for his element quiz. Have I been helping you study this, or are you just doing it on your own? I'm doing it on my own. Right. Okay. Yeah. I've got the periodic table here. He can't, he, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, see it, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to try to hit this thing. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready for your quiz? Sure. Okay. Um, what is CL? Chlorine. What is AL? Aluminum. What is CU? Copper. I, was that I, I just want to give some more context because like literally just before like before that video there's a there's a couple other videos where you can see the natural unfolding so it's not like they were sitting there preparing for a chemistry quiz it was literally max comes up to katie and says um you know there's no lead in lead pencils in there no oh, i think less. i'm gonna play that i just didn't know what order they were in oh okay maybe okay. i just have them out of order i don't know here, so me, so me, it, yeah. it starts with that video and then after that it's not that video not that one not that one not that one so no you don't have that video oh okay i don't have it okay. yeah so so i'm just giving that context so like so max comes up and, and says that and they're like kind of talking about that and the next video he's got a battery in his hand it, it looks like a little miniature car battery and he said, he's explaining like, this does have lead in it. And she asks like, how do you know that? And he says, cause it says PB on it. And uh, she says, oh, okay. And what is PB? He's like, that's lead. And then he goes and gets his, like literally in that video, he goes and, and gets the periodic table chart that she's holding in that, that video you just showed. And uh, he's like looking for PB. And he's like looking for it upside down actually. And then he turns it around. And he's like, okay, here it is. And then, um, and then that's when she's like, hey, why don't I ask you some questions about what's on this? And that's okay. literally the video you just showed was the video right after that of like, hey, why don't I ask you some questions about what's on this? Okay. So, so it, you know, just to, so everybody knows, it's like, this was just a natural, just like in the moment, hey, what is this? Um, I'm not sure which one. The next video I think is that one. Yeah. This one here? The one with the with the red thing there. Okay. Yeah. You ready for more? Okay. What is Z N? Zinc. What is it? Zinc. What is um, C R? Chromium. I meant chromium. What is L I? What is W? Tungsten. What is H G? Mercury. What is uh, LV? Livermorium. What is RN? Radon. What is XE? 
Zen. What is BR? Did that one stump you? BR. Is it, oh, is it bromine? Yes. Um, Isn't it like a halogen? I think you're right. <laughs> is it a halogen? It's that to me is hilarious. <laughs> so is it right? So basically, today I'm gonna explain about my my files. Okay, tell us about your files. So here's file number four. My first file I'm gonna show you. It's showing about sac seracium, which is four AU gold atoms. Oh, cool. It is on a stable atom. Uh huh. These are things he's making up, by the way. <laughs> Wait, no, it's not an ion, but it's. It's not, it's not noble. It's not a noble. Okay, cool. So next is going to be my, my second one I'm gonna show you. It's called file number three. This file is really cool. It's really basic, can't you see? So like hydrogens, oxygens, hydrogens being linked. Nice. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like H2O, but it, but it can be triple bonding hydrogen, which seems impossible. So it seems impossible. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to talk about the third file because in the last videos I did file two, three, and four. So this is file number two, and it's the third file I'm going to show you. And it's talking about how this works, like like squeezing squeezing oxygen and the hydrogen. Really okay. Cool. Can I see it real quick? Yes. What's the arrow for? It's showing that it's in pressure. Oh. It's, it's like it's like pressuring it. It's pressurizing itself. Okay. Because cool. the oxygens are trying to get into hydrogen. Nice. Really crazy. Then file number one. Oh, yeah. File number one. It's the first one I'm gonna ever show you. And that. I like is, this one. And that is hydrogen. Tell us about this one. So basically, it's like aluminums are sharing, and like hydrogen is sharing its electrons with both of the aluminum. And you call this last video count off. Anyways, basically, it's like talking about like trivalent bonds. Trivalent bonds. You want, you want to hold it in for me? Yeah, I do. What's what's between the the ALs? What's the AL? It's aluminum. Okay, and then what's the H? Hydrogen. No, this hydrogen is not double bonding exactly. It's not double bonding? It doesn't have two bonds. It's only if it really has one. It's, this thing is kind of considering the aluminum set the same atom. But you called it trivalent? Yeah, but it's really just covalent, but it's kind of like trivalent. Okay. Neat. It's most likely covalent. That's cool. So, Katie, this, these are my files. And you can see, I'll make more eventually, but these are my first files. The ones that I got kind of nice. What's really cool is with this little thing right here, he's that's not a real compound. Mm -hmm. But within it, what's may not obvious to everybody is, and he's he kind of explains it, although people don't have the context, like hydrogen only has one electron available for bonding, right? Yeah. So it shouldn't be able to bond with two atoms of aluminum. Um and he knows aluminum has three available. So you notice there's one, two, three. So it makes sense for the aluminums why they would be bonded that way. And what he's trying to say is he's making this up that hydrogen, he, this curved one is like, it's a bond that goes between two atoms. So even though hydrogen can only have one bond, it's like doing one bond between two. This is why he called it trivalent. So he's like making up his own ideas. You know, it's like a creative, just like a, he's playing. Yeah. Right. It's like you're making up stories about some thing you're playing or whatever. Right. And so I wanted to show that, too, because it's like. Um, he's playing the space Kim game. He wants to learn about chemistry. He's doing like all kinds of like learning the periodic table, like that thing I showed you with like the oxygen and the, the protons and neutrons. That was from some online simulator from some you know University of Colorado or whatever. So he's doing all the stuff like you would do in high school, but then he's also playing as well and making up his own stuff. And like, he's making those files. Like I, I remember seeing him start that process. He took like a graph paper and like divided up into grids and he had scissors out and he cut out all those squares himself and like came up with the idea. Of, they're like those were sleeves for like a CD. 
It was like yeah, a craft work yeah. compilation <laughs> that we have, right? So he took all the CDs out and was using the sleeves for like his files, right? And he calls them like data files or something. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like um, the vocabulary point is so critical and people underestimate that. And it's interesting because when you listen to discussions on education or reading problems or whatever, it's always this sort of like, oh, and you know, they might have a problem with vocabulary. It's like this, it's like a thing. It's amongst the many things. Yeah. But it's really the most fundamental part. And it's the reason why all the other stuff occurs, but it's being treated as if vocabulary is just one like side thing of amongst, like you have, you know, executive functioning and you have this and that and all these different things. And you also have vocabulary and it's like vocabulary is what makes all the other stuff function or not. Right. It's like, you know? it's like a belief that vocabulary is outside yourself instead of inside yeah. you. Yeah. And like, as if it's a subject in itself. Mm -hmm. Instead of the actual operating it, system. It would be like, like how, how the yeah. fuck can you have a subject without it? It's like, uh, what do you study? I'm studying chemistry, uh, Spanish and vocabulary. So how are you studying Spanish? Like, isn't that okay? Like, so what are you studying when you're studying vocabulary? Well, so well, the way we've been, it's been treated in school, we, we see vocabulary as knowing extra words that many people don't know. And not even whether you actually know the words that you think you know, or the letters. And you know, that whole, you guys always encounter this too. It's like, people argue about like, well, math isn't just vocabulary. It's like, well, what else is it? Well, it's numbers. <laughs> what are numbers? <laughs> How do you know what exactly. a number is? It's just, it's just, they're just words and they're just yeah. symbols. There's nothing else. And you put them together in different contexts and you have, understand their relationship between them. That's what vocabulary means. Yeah. It's, it's words and their relationships. It's, it's funny, like with, you know, numbers, it's like, like, come on, obviously you've heard math is a language, right? But Aside from I know that, if a scientist says it like it's the universal language. Oh yeah, that, that's like oh I love that, and it's like it feels like the spiritual fucking like epiphany yeah. or something. But then <laughs> if you say it's just a language, it's just words, and it's like well no 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 it, it's it's more than that. It's more than that. It's got it. it's, it, it, then what about the numbers? There's numbers because you're like what else? You're like well like numbers. <laughs> okay. But, symbols. <laughs> what about the symbols? It's like people don't understand um, the word relationship. You know, because it, it, that's really, everything comes down to relationships, you know, like in math, it's the relationship of this number to that number, but also that is vocabulary at the same time. Like it's literally. How logic. can you understand three without understanding two and four? Yeah. I, I can, <laughs> how can you understand like add without understanding that word? How can you understand any of this dialogue without understanding any of these words and their relationships to one another and and to reality yeah. you know it, it's just and, yeah what it comes down to is even when people have problems with math or even with writing and stuff it's just a vocabulary problem yeah because even writing it's like you don't have the the physical movements of a particular thing integrated effectively you don't have the words integrated effectively and i know this because and that's not only with our kids you see with many kids when they start using Technotutor, especially from a young age, although you see it can be corrected later on, but especially from a young age, they will spontaneously start writing without being taught how to write. So it just shows you when you have the words integrated within you effectively, physically, you start expressing it. And that's what I'm trying to show with all these chemistry things. Like Max is just expressing himself because now these words are a part of him. Right. It wasn't that cool. He said like Livermorium. Like how many adults would know that? Dude, I didn't know that. I probably wouldn't even know like, W. I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I knew W, right? But when he said LV, I was like, I don't know that one. And he said it, I was like, holy shit, this kid knows more chemistry than I did. And like that was just a few examples. <laughs> I've tested him on like, I mean, we must I wrote him down as I did it. And out of like 95, he he knew 90 of them. Wow. Like just going through the periodic table and I'm writing it. I just don't have the list with me, but wow. like he knew so many of them just from reading it. And then people would say and think that you have to have some special gift to do that. But then also discounting what we did in the beginning and have been doing this whole time. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I've yeah. seen the actual development. It's like 
what is the scientific method? You do this, you see the result. You don't do this, you see the, you know, like you actually test things out and see. I remember when he was like three, um, you guys had done all the states and, and like he could recognize the states just based off of their shape, you know? And just seeing that, like, dude, do you know how many people, adults, don't know the states? Well, you know why, we, why I did that? Because of that Mensa girl, right? I saw, yeah, I saw this video. It was like from some news channel and it was like the youngest girl in Mensa or whatever. And she was like some three-year-old. And I watched the video and we were interviewing the parents and everything. And it was basically, she could put the, the map of the states together. And like, she knew her letters and stuff. And there, there was nothing extraordinary about, I mean, from the perspective of anything our kids can do or yeah. things I've seen technotutor kids do. Yeah. And I'm like, and yet they're like, this kid's a genius. And the thing is, if you're like, well, she must've taken some kind of test. They, there is no IQ test at that age. No, it's no, not like definitely. she was doing some crazy, like all thing. It's like, they were just testing her memory and stuff. That's they it. don't even count the test. I think if you're like, I, I want to say if you're like nine years old and you take that test, they don't even count it. Like it's not, it's not real. Right. Like, cause, cause I remember I took it at nine or whatever, <laughs> a couple of times. And, uh, but, um, they don't count it if you're that young. There's there's no way to tell. It's just I don't know. Kid was they don't fence. have a test because the test is based on vocabulary and explanation and so forth. Yeah. So you have to have the words. All right. So, anyways, it was just interesting because I'm looking at this like this is what's considered genius. Like the kid's a genius. And like, you know, the dad was like, Yeah, we started to know because she would be in the back seat and she would be reciting her her kids' books from memory. You know, like I'm talking 20 pages of like, you know, and it's like the cat went to the store, you know, like stuff like that. He's got a good memory. Right. That, but, but see, that's, that's what parents and just our society in general thinks is intelligence is like you have a good memory. And that's because the way our schools are designed, the way our education system is designed is just to reward those who have that's, a good memory. But that's also what the, where a big fuck up comes in too, because they will say that kids know the alphabet when they just memorize the song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and now you have it masks the point of the kid whether the kid actually has integrated it or not and we know how to actually test and see does the kid know this actually or not right and so you're gonna be able to prevent a lot of problems but what's interesting too is like you could be let's say a genius right let's say there's memory geniuses in china right now that i know i cog in a machine and a fucking you know communist system yeah so it's like the system standard of intelligence or memory or whatever the fuck is virtually irrelevant to actual reality because real genius, real intelligence, or even if let's say you did have good memory, would be using it to apply it to create outcomes that are actually best for everybody, not just perpetuating the current system. Yeah. Here's the other thing about that is like, um, if you're actually genius, then you're able to be creative, you know? And so if, if you just have a really strong memory, okay, you have a really strong memory. But if you're not being creative with it, meaning you're not using what you learned for doing something, like you're saying, applying it towards what's best, or like, oh, we, we can change this, we can, you know, make this better, you, you're just like, uh, and then four plus four is eight and, and nine plus nine is 18. It's just like, you know, you're just rattling off like random numbers, you know, really quickly. You know, like there's 213 toothpicks on the floor. Like who gives a shit? It's you like know? a limitless when he has like all this creative ability. And at the end, he just like decides to trade stocks. <laughs> right. Right. It, it, like I remember watching that and going like, that's it. That's what you would do with like unlimited. You see, you see the programming though. You see yes. the programming. That's the program, that, yeah. that gets a lot of these young guys to like want to do day trading and all that or online trading. Oh, that's that's, right. Right. that's yeah. what you would do with your fucking life. That's fucking bullshit. That's lame as fuck. But then fuck. look at look at like the really, let's say the genius people that we would talk about in our society and how they all perpetuate the system of abuse. Like they never in any level want to change anything. You know, like you talk about the Black Rocks and all these things, and it's like, look at all the industries where like just a few companies own virtually everything. 
and yet they all play off each other, creating war, disease, etc. You see what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. not they're, they're so even the genius that's beyond the memorization genius is just fucking like used for abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I was I was looking at this. I um, I like studying some of the more like big picture stuff. Like I think last week I said I, I was uh, reading that book, Tragedy and Hope. And then there's some other stuff too, like. Um, just people I've listened to like on the Lex Friedman podcast and things like that, who some of them are kind of like, it tends to be kind of those decentralized folks who are like, you know, questioning the system kind of, but they still have the current limited uh, programming and they don't know that you can change the programming. But I, I was, uh, I was looking at this idea where, you know how they have that old phrase, like history is written by the victors yeah right so when you look at history it's like it is kind of skewed and, and so but then I, there's i always whenever i hear that phrase and man that victor guy i think i should name my son victor you know, it is actually kind of an interesting word right <laughs> um so yeah if, if history is written by the victors well consider this if you don't write history you can never be a victor Ooh. So meaning the ability to sculpt the narrative allows you to have that possibility in the future of actually becoming that victor. And this is why you got fucking Klaus Schwab and these guys, literally his newest book, well, one of his newest books is called The Great Narrative. Yeah. It's because they know this. They know when you can influence the minds like that, it, it, it reminds me of earlier how you were talking about uh, Al Gore being that spokesperson to throw out these words, then it gets impulse into the masses and then it like disseminates. And there was another phrase I heard the other day. I, I never heard this, but it, it just, it was, it was really interesting. Um, it's apparently from some congressman from back in the sixties. I forget his name, but it's, um, he says, never argue the man who buys ink by the barrel. <laughs> Meaning, if you're going to rock the boat or whatever, like in, there's certain people you should piss off or shouldn't piss off, the guy who buys ink by the barrel, meaning the person who influences the mass media, the press, like that's the person that you shouldn't piss off. Now, that was a congressman back in the 60s. That's a certain context. So this morning, I'm, I'm also reading Anti-Fragile, and uh, he was talking about there are certain certain positions in the world world system basically i mean i'm putting my own words to it but there are certain positions in the world system where it is inherently uh fragile for example let's say you're you know some mid-level uh manager at a bank can you really go on your social media and start posting shit about you know oh we should question wearing the masks and shit it's like you can't really no you can't it's it's fragile position and he, uh, the author is making a particular case that there are certain positions that do allow you to be more anti-fragile. For example, being an author, like sometimes negative press actually fuels what you do. All right. And that's kind of interesting, right? It's like what we have with technitude is like the ultimate anti-fragile thing, because you can write and say whatever the fuck you want about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't take away from actually the essence of what it is. So it's this very interesting like ideas of vocabulary around how does the world system work? How does the individual participate in the world system? And how can you participate so effectively that you can actually influence the world system and then get that disseminated? But you just see there's like, there's just levels to it. And really the, the, the critical threshold you have to cross is understanding TechnoTutor because it really does represent the disruption of the world system. Hey, Anything else mean? can't do it. Clarify what you mean by understanding technology. Understanding technology as in what it really is. Because some people look at it and they're like, oh, you know, it's an education tool, you get smart, you get good grades for kids' education. Yeah, you know, private school, technology tutor, whatever. It's like people will have their pre-programmed view of what they think it is. But at some point, when you take it on for yourself and you actually study and you actually 
look at not just technically, but then also like the blogs, Heaven's Journey, Creation's Journey, the Destiny stuff, listen to the Bernard audios, and you really take it on, you start to see, okay, as a human, this is what I'm working with. I have a body that had a natural learning ability when I was a child and I got programmed. And now I'm a walking, talking robot. And now there are ways to reprogram that. If it does not get reprogrammed, it will not change. But if if and when it does get reprogrammed, it allows for actual change and actual real expression. And then you also see the state of the fucking world. <laughs> and you see that all these kids that are watching Roblox and Disney and all that. And then you witness Max, Seneca, Arya, you know, Ben, all of these kids. And you start to see, okay, this is now proof. Not that you really need, it's like you can reason it out for yourself. I mean, when I first met Max and I met you guys in Denver, I was like, oh, I can see where this is going. But it helped being able to chat with Max when he was three or whatever. But now it's like, this is really the next level. You know, it yeah. really is. That that point of like being able to um, see that child at that age doing what Max is doing at that age, what Seneca was doing at that age, what, you know, a bunch of other kids are also doing at that age. Now, um, you know, it, if you have eyes, it just becomes like super obvious of like, oh shit, like this, this is next level. You know, especially like if you've been around a kid that age, you know, like they're not doing this. If you if, <laughs> dude, if you go around any six-year-old, they're not, they don't know chemistry. They don't know chemistry. Like the way this kid knows chemistry, you get around a lot of, and you could make the case like, oh, well, you could say, oh, well, because, you know, he's just so young. He absorbs everything. Okay, why don't all the six-year-olds know chemistry like that? And then the other thing is, um, you'd say, you might say, well, he's just so smart. He's just so advanced. Okay, why doesn't, uh, you know, a high schooler even know chemistry like this? They don't. It's like they, there's, it's really clear. And it's it's so funny because, you know, it's like we've said, it's not a magic pill, you know? Th there's very clear steps to get to this point. And that's why it can be replicable. That's why other people are doing it. Other, it's, it's funny because I point out to other people, it's like, okay, sure, you might think Cameron is really smart, Katie's really smart. And so of course they're gonna have really smart kids. Sure, although we've already gone through, I don't remember how long ago it was. Yeah, I fucking, I failed chemistry. Oh, there well, you go. I failed it, but I got pretty close to failing it in college. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which if I was so smart as Max, like that should have been pretty easy, right? Like I right. definitely wasn't. <laughs> right. And, and it okay. just doesn't even explain. It's not about being smart. <laughs> it's about what actual words you know. But it's like people <clears throat> look at you and Katie and they're like, they have this assumption. Oh, you're smarter than I am. So of course your kids are going to be genius, whatever. Sure. Like, Okay. But also we've gone through the numbers of like how likely it is to have three hyper, two hyperlexic children that don't have autism. <laughs> and now it's about to be three hyperlexic children. Well, they're not hyperlexic though, but I know sure. your point. Yeah, sure. just making like, that clear to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like- They're um, just lexic. They're, well, they're hyperlexia lexic. is like, it's spontaneous. Right. Right. That'd be like if you just were looked like me and then tomorrow I came on the podcast and I had like fucking huge ripped muscles and shit. You'd be like, the fuck? and you can't even do that with steroids. Right. It would yeah. just like spontaneously happen. Like versus like if I came back four years from now and I was super ripped, you'd be like, oh, you went to the gym, you ate certain things, you know, like it'd be pretty fucking obvious how you did it. Yeah. All right. No, I, I'm glad you clarified that because it's like, but just the fact. But yeah, that we went through and we're like, okay, let's assume. Somebody said, well, they're hyperlexic. They're reading at such a young age or whatever. Like so, it would be so the odds of it would be so. Let's put that aside, right? And and just say, oh, it's because Katie and Cameron are so smart. But then we've got all these other families that are no blood relation, <laughs> not even not even friend relation <laughs> to Katie and Cameron. Uh, and their kids are able to do the same things. It's the same trajectory. Yeah. It's the same trajectory. They want to start at the same time, yeah. Right, right. exactly. 
and uh, you know, our kids are are gonna do the same thing. Like it's it's so cool to see that and just go, okay, we have we have the solution, right? And now it's just about like Mitch was saying earlier, sharing that, right? Sharing that solution with us. Doing it yourself also. and then sharing yeah. it. Right. Um, but yeah, hey, no, I want to switch gears for a second. We were because we were talking about the DID stuff, and I had found some other stuff I wanted to share with you guys because I had this insight of because Katie had made this point like when she first showed me this DID OSDD stuff, and she was like, Oh, it's like an it's like the new thing or whatever, you know, kind of like trans and all that became this big thing, right? And she's like, It's the new thing. And at first, I was like, Well, that doesn't make sense because all the videos she was showing me were like four or five years old. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, but now I'm, because in even the stuff I looked at where I started to look into it, it was all really old stuff. Of course, I'm not on TikTok, so I can't see like what's being shown there. But now I'm seeing, I found a YouTube channel where it's like only a few months old and the person had, didn't really have any stuff before. And I'm not saying they're faking it. It's not about whether it's real or fake. It's just now they're pr promoting themselves as a system. And it's this girl. And, um, and I'm seeing now this point because I, actually I want to show you guys first and then I'll give some more context. Do you tend to notice that a lot of them are female or is it like men? And I'm sure there may be some males. I haven't seen any yet, but I'm sure there are some. Um, but check this out. So here's her talking initially of like, I think this is the video where she decided to like say that she's, you know, OSDD or whatever. Coming out as a system. It looks like she hasn't song. been. She has not been diagnosed by a, by a by a psychologist, as far as I can tell, based on watching a couple of her videos. Hi. Oh my god, I can't believe she did that, and I can't believe I am about to do this. So, um. As you see, this particular video is not going to be like the others and it's making me very, very nervous. Mm. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm the host of the lunar system. What that exactly means explains you know to you who just randomly decided to record a video at 1am and I decided, yes, it was time to put it up. This is the next day. <laughs> so I'm going to skip forward to the video she's talking about. It's in this video. Okay. But I want you to watch something that happens at the beginning of the video, of, of this next clip, rather. Have fun watching. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Today's got to be a very, very different video. Okay. Did you catch it? Uh, Do you see the pronouns? No. Oh. <laughs> so basically she goes through and talks about, you know, she's got multiple personality disorder, which is an outdated term. It's really, now they call it DID or OSDD. There's essentially the same thing. There's some nuanced differences, right? Um, but we, and we talked about it last time. But it's like when she put the pronouns there, I really started seeing like how this plays into the transgenderism point. Um, so it's and, DID. And, OSDD, LGBTQDDD. <laughs> yeah, now they got to put all the Ds and stuff. Okay, but but think about it like the LGBT stuff. First, it's gay, lesbian, bi stuff. Then it's the trans stuff. And then what have you noticed at the same time you have the trans stuff, you have the racism stuff coming up. But there's another big point. I don't know. I mean, I know I'm being vague about it. I know you guys know what I'm talking about, but I'm trying to be vague about it. There's another point that's like suddenly everyone's talking about, right? And it's the idea of mental health yeah. and like mental destigmatizing de mental disorders and so forth. Right? Yeah, I was going to say autism. Oh, I, that's another one, right? And ADHD. Yeah. Right. Neurodiversity was a, a word that right. I yeah, neurodivergent. Heard. Yeah. And so when I was looking at the first couple of videos this girl made on her channel was about her having ADHD. 
And I watched another video this morning. I've seen like three of his her videos and she was talking about, oh, actually I wanna play one more and then I wanna, I wanna explain. Imagine, imagine if one of them is like a she, her, the other is a he, him. And then you're like trying to refer to the person. You're like, fuck, which one? <laughs> the They're like getting offended all the time. Like, hey, you missed gender to me. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay, but check this out. This this kind of ties into the whole point. And for moments, um, because I'm I'm just really frustrated. I have not gotten therapy for like two months. One to two months because a lot of my appointments were at the same time as my finals. I had to reschedule. And now, we today, we get the new appointments. They're in two and a half months. But who needs therapy, right? <laughs> like, I, I need therapy. I desperately need therapy. Um, I'm so far away from getting diagnosed or getting any kind of help and I honestly don't know what to do at this point. My therapist, the one I'm currently going to, has never had a system as a patient. I have to teach her about what we're going through. And on top of that, she tells me, hey, I think you need a little bit of spirituality in your life. That could make things better. I'm sorry, but I don't believe in that shit. If you do, no disrespect, but like, I don't, I don't. It doesn't help me. I need someone who knows about this night. Admittedly, I originally went to her because she knows about ADHD and is very accepting of it, which great. But now we're having a new problem and she cannot diagnose us or anything. Um, she recognizes that we are a system, so that's good. She cannot help us. Still, I'm going to her. Conti I continue to go there because I have no alternatives. And just talking to someone who might say something good at some point is at least something but now i don't even have that anymore and i still have 12 appointments with her left before i can look for a new therapist which i tried that before there is no one here in the close proximity it was close to no therapist who could take us and those who could have an even long even longer waiting time okay so there was a couple of points I just noticed within it. It's like the whole they, them thing. Now it's like, can be used in a new way. You know what I mean? Where it's like, you're referring to a person as they, because they experience themselves as multiple different identities within one body. You see what I mean? Yeah. And it's fascinating because, you know, it's not about like whether I think this person is faking it or whether they really experiencing themselves this way. What's interesting is when you listen to the explanations for why people experience this multiple personality or DID thing, it's like traumas and then their identities split up into different identities. But imagine you're like, everybody within them has different things. Okay. It's like you go into a room and you act like one character with certain people you act like a different character with other things and different depending on the situation you have different characters that come in now imagine the story you start telling yourself or they start to believe is that they're all separate actual identities like you know that they're not different beings in there but they're different identities but even yourself you see yourself as just one of the identities so it's not even in a coherent point of like i am a being it's like i'm just a body with identities and it's you're totally just your consciousness you see what I'm saying? Yeah. There is no actual self that is a being in itself. There's just the different con there's di the consciousness, which in this case is split up into multiple different identities. And so now I'm kind of, you know, I'm not trying to make a prediction, but the way I see it is this will become potentially the, the new thing that's kind of like the trans or the whatever. Because yeah. imagine, assume it, assume it starts to become viral which it may or may not, but it, it just makes sense to me that it would be a point where- It will go viral. You see, I, I don't know, but like I, I could see it as like, it's it's an underlying point where there's a lot of convenience within it because it's, it's you can see how she's very much seeing herself as a victim. I um, I would have identified with that community 
internally pre-techno tutor and would not have voiced it or like announced it or told anybody. I just would have thought to myself, oh, I can relate to that so much because I'm out there, you know, going to these metal shows and then I'm going doing this philanthropist, like helping the community or I'm going sometimes I even it's like there's like, a helping Jess and then there's like this dark one maybe that's like yeah, that's yeah. Joe you know or whatever well and and I think at the metal shows it's like I would go into the mosh pit and like you've mutually agreed to hurt each other and cause pain to each other you know like that weird unspoken agreement in the mosh pit and that's it's that like social contract that they were talking about during you know Master but then like but then I, I as soon as I leave the show I'd never heard someone like that you know and I would I would give the homeless people everything that I had and all this stuff and it's like just multiple different personalities of me for sure and like I was getting to a point where like I had chopped off all my hair and I started to like really dress very eccentrically and oh one thing that I desired to become was like a a model that was like super flexible. So like someone that like a, a extortion or a, I forget what it's called. Not an extortionist. A, <laughs> not an extortionist. No. Contortionist, like a contor yes. Yeah. contor, yes, a contortionist model. So then you're like taking pictures while you're in like these crazy positions. So I was like stretching and like getting ready for that and just all this stuff. And and like, yet I wanted to be a writer. Yet I wanted to be a singer. Like I would go to these <laughs> open mic nights with my ukulele and I was not good. <laughs> like not singing on key, like not good. And the manager hated that I would go because he like was, you're not good. Like you shouldn't be here, but I'd go yeah, anyway. <laughs> And I go and I to you. <laughs> you show up in a different outfit and you're like, oh, I'm Joe now. Like, uh, I can actually sing. <laughs> yeah. So and and the so I was renting a room out of this house. And I would go in the backyard and I'd just sing. And I'd sing super loud. And one time he came out and he was like, What are you doing? You're gonna scare the neighbors like stop singing in the backyard and I was like what the fuck? why can you tell me what to do <laughs> so anyways I just brought that up because I was scattered in the similar yeah. way that is being showed and depicted in those videos yeah. where I would have felt like oh that's what's going on that right. must be what's happening happening right. for because I have all these different things I like and so this must be creative jazz this must be right. crazy like dark jazz this must be you know all these different things and so I would have compartmentalized myself and really all those different areas are means of me getting energy essentially yeah like it's like well, oh yeah. I'm comfortable enough to be in this situation and I'm getting energy from it. So let me do that. You know, one thing we haven't really talked about is like, okay, well, what is trauma to these individuals, right? Because I think generally speaking, a lot, a lot of times people will think of trauma as like something very drastic, very traumatic, very just like, you know, uh, you got abandoned or raped or, you know, something like that. Whereas trauma can literally be just as simple as like, I can't find a parking you, spot. You, what was that? You can't, you can't find, find a parking, parking spot. spot. Okay. Sure. I'm serious. People who aren't used to like downtown environments and are looking for a parking spot, it can be very traumatic. I, yeah. I, I've so, seen I've seen people traumatized from that kind of. I, I was thinking before. more along the lines of like. You know, you're not supported effectively from your parents and you realize okay. that, you know, yeah. like, like, well, you know, we'll go back to like the, the daycare stuff we were talking about. I don't know if we talked about it before or after we start recording, but, you know, listen, what was that woman, Sir, Suzanne? Um, Finker. Finker. And, and her making that point about, you know, with daycares, like in the, in the beginning stages of a child's life, they need the mother. 
but people who advocate daycare make it seem like it's it doesn't really matter. They just have basic physical needs and yes. you don't really need like the other aspects until you get older. Yes. When in reality, that's not true. They need the mother. Yeah. And um, and so can you go imagine more imagine the, those things not well, but just imagine that not getting those things, like what you need from the mother. That's like everybody now. Because everybody's being put in daycare, preschool, you know, not literally yeah. everybody, but most everybody, like at least mm-hmm. way too early. I mean, I don't agree with doing it at all, but let's just say you agreed at five or something. Okay. Pe- there people are putting their babies like five months old and stuff in daycare, you know, or mm-hmm. eight six months weeks, or whatever, dude. six, six weeks. weeks. So, so there's that in itself is trauma. Yeah. Yes. It's like, yes. you could say it's not because you don't see it as like you're slapping the baby or something, but if somebody needs something and they don't get it, that is a trauma. See, I, Whether it's I, dramatic or not is not the point. The right. first time that I was put in daycare, I recognized, like I can look back and recognize that I was being traumatized. And like in the moment, I may not have been able to say this is trauma, but I was not. Like if I, you think about like people who are, like picked on in school or singled out or separated or doesn't fit in the group, feel ostracized. All of that started for me literally when I went to daycare. So it was like already I could tell like, this is not a healthy environment. This is not like I had to go play by myself while all these other kids are playing together. And my mom wasn't there to support me. And so it was just like, I felt like this was even worse than being at home with my family, because if my brothers didn't play with me, it was fine because they were just my brothers. But now it's like all these other people, why aren't these people playing with me? What's wrong with me? Like a tiny little child, like, and then your mom isn't there to explain to you what's going on. At least at home, my mom could say like, hey, they're choosing to do this activity and it's not really a good fit for you. Why don't you do this instead? You know, we're at daycare. You don't go up to the daycare lady because you're like a little like, I don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just got thrown to your house. I don't know for sure what the rules are here. And you're just a little. And then I remember vividly one of the first times I was at daycare. What song does she play? And she played it every day. Baby shark, do 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 do. Oh. Baby shark, do. Oh my gosh! Really? That was a just... Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. No, but it just I it just ingrained into my head. Like I just vividly remember being afraid of sharks because of that song. I thought like my I whole life. A newer song. Anytime that I, okay, I'm only 25. I'm like that song was not around. Five when years I was... younger than you. I, I don't remember that song being around when I was going to date. That, but that song has been. Yeah, but you were done with date. You were probably in preschool. You were I don't know. So I mean, it's the new the new version that everybody listens to is not the same. It's it's a song that's it's been different. around a long time. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. and uh, so I. But even I'll, I'll, in. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll just say this. I'll just say this. I'll go. <laughs> because, I I can remember very vividly, crying being dropped mm. off at, at daycare it was my family's yeah. fucking daycare it was literally your house <laughs> it was literally well, it was you like walk out the door you're extension. like all right go back inside. it was Time an extension daycare. of your house it, it was it was like a, it was five minutes from our house but you're also with all these other kids right Who you're right there's, but it was yeah. all these other kids my grandmother's there uh a couple of my aunts may have been there you it's know. also the environment of daycare itself it's not just that you knew the people right, right. there's a whole system but i remember daycare, right? crying like at the door like struggling to mm. not go inside the building like holding on to literally yeah. the things outside and you know like dude said, i remember when i was a kid like my mom because she'd have to go to work she would drop me off i mean i went to daycare also but at a certain age when i was younger i don't remember exactly when um she would drop me off at my grandma's mm. and i remember one time like my uncle was there and he like had cut his he had shaved his mustache off and that, like, I was like terrified. Who the fuck is this? You know, like, yeah. I mean, I was very wow. young. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, my mom's like, I gotta go. I can't. They can't do anything. They couldn't support me with it properly. You know. So like, that doesn't seem like it's traumatic because you're not working in a coal mine. But you, there's, I think there's a blog from Bernard. I know it's a blog. I don't remember which one, where he talks about all like the really violent like movies and stuff that are on TV or like on movies and stuff. Oh and, yeah. And, and how in a way it's like the system uses it so that people feel within themselves like well i'm not that bad 
Right. And so because yeah. you see the thing about the kid working in the coal mine or being raped or whatever, it's like, well, my trauma, yeah. I mean, I, I just got dropped off at daycare. It's not that big of a deal. And it's like, you don't have to literally cut a tree down to abuse it. You could just starve it of water. Mm. That's equally traumatic. You know what I mean? It's, it's still going to have a lasting effect on that person's psyche. Yeah. I relate to that a lot. I've mentioned this maybe once on the podcast before, but when I had gotten into a car accident and was in recovery, one of the things that I would do is read autobiographies from World War II of just people who went through the concentration camps and like their experience, because it was like, fuck dude, but nothing that I'm going through is at all like comparable to that. So this is nothing. And I belittled what I was going through, but what I went through was 100% trauma. It was dude. very intense. And I, I definitely like separated myself from my trauma that I was experiencing and like suppressed it through just saying like, oh, it's not that bad because all these other people out here are going through way worse. Like it doesn't mean that your trauma is less than, it just is different and affects you differently. Yeah. So it's like, we have very basic needs and if those aren't met, that causes a dysfunction. Yeah. So that's really the point. It's not about comparing trauma, like who's worse. It's like, does it cause, it's like you can have a major virus in your computer or something minor and it can still have a big effect on the computer, right? So that's the point that I was trying to make is just like, okay, so the prerequisites to this DID, OSDD is some trauma. And literally, if you've been put into daycare, you you got the requisite. You trauma. qualify. <laughs> well, it, it's not necessarily like a prerequisite in the sense of a diagnosis. I, I, actually, I don't know that for certain, but because, well, the OSDD is not in the DSM, apparently. I haven't checked it, but I think the DID might be. Um, DID but definitely is. It is, yeah. But the explanation for where the dissociation occurs is due to a trauma. Right? I don't know if it right. has to be, to be to part of the diagnosis, but when you look at that, I guess the point we're all trying to make is, everyone actually experiences trauma. So that's why I can see, right, this becoming the next thing, like why trans, for example, is becoming so popular is not just because kids are being brainwashed by it. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, that'd be like saying watching gay porn makes you gay. (laughs) So I'm like, oh God, please don't show me any, please. Oh shit. You know, like, like it's, if there wasn't already something there, it wouldn't have that. I mean, I'm not talking about from a young age or something like that. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe the analogy isn't a good one. It's forcing but you to watch gay porn, Cameron. I'm a little it's concerned. one of my altars, okay? <laughs> oh, okay, got it, got it's it. It's called, a, <laughs> the altars that are mean to you are called, um, uh, it's not antagonizers. There's like a name they have for like an altar that's like abusive to you. Mm. And then there's altars that are protective. Mm. I'm just remembering the name is it's like Gee, the more for... you explain this the more I would have gone into this before teaching. well and, and this is what I realized when you were saying that is like there will be a lot of people who then see the TikToks or the videos and like that girl I'm not saying she was super charismatic but she sort of has that point that it's like people would want to listen to her she you has, know and she's like you know, performative you know what it is it's she's like attractive and also like attracted to a specific uh, demographic, which I would say is like the like gamer type people. Yeah, like, she's she got has... sort of like that nerdy, cute sort of yes. thing, right? Yeah. So I can see how that she could be an influence on somebody. Whether she's faking it, telling the truth doesn't matter. And the thing is, even the point of faking is interesting because. Well, I mean, if somebody was just literally just pretending, which you could do, it'd be hard to tell. Because even the people who are very performative, you, you could have a disorder, like you could be schizophrenic and still, and also be like super performative. And it seems like you're just making this whole thing up when you're yeah. just also really good at talking or or, or speaking or, or, or performing. So I could see how, um, like, like people in your experience, right? Just where it's like, well, I kind of relate to all that. And it's like, suddenly I'm getting words for it. Then the yes. moment you accept, oh, that's what's going on. Then you your feel mind seen. can start. Well, but then your mind can start assigning names to all these different points yeah. like oh, automatically. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. now it's like you're, 
oh, this is what, and I'm, I see all these videos now, because obviously I get recommended them. I'm looking at this, but it's like, we realized, you know, the, the day we discovered we are a system. And it's like, they were watching something and exactly just like what you were talking about. It's like, oh, I realize now these experiences I was having is this, mm -hmm. instead of it being like, and, and I think there's a level to which then it can start to take on a new life of its own. Because I've watched Definitely. lots of videos of people who were schizophrenic, for example, or OCD. And it starts off, it can start off very mild, but then you participate mm -hmm. in it and it grows and it grows and it grows to the point where like God is talking mm -hmm. to you. You have a secret mission that you have to fulfill or everyone will die next year or something like that. You know, like it can get full And blown. also, also, it's not just people who go into extremes that will be able to relate to this. Right. Because like minor, yeah, people yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis, while they're doing the dishes, may feel like a different person than who they are while they're cooking. Because inherently, like, you're cleaning something or you're creating something. You know, it's like there, there's a different skill being used. So if you're just using plainly a different skill or like a maybe you're being creative here or you're being constructive here or disciplined here or whatever, when you exercise a different muscle to do something, you'll relate to that potentially where it's not necessarily this dramatic, like I explained for me or these people in these contexts, I'm like grounding it. So you understand like the average person could potentially be influenced by these videos just plainly by their day to day or or who they are when they go to work, who they are when they order from the coffee shop that they always go to, who they are when they're at home with their kids and their wife, you know, like those people naturally kind of play into different characters anyways. Yeah. It's, it's like, if it's enough, I think, um, and here's why I think it will go viral, um, is because if it's enough to make you think, maybe that's me, um which these videos have that quality to them then that thought will persist within you when you're doing other things that's it, it's also even more accessible i think than the trans thing a hundred percent oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know now De whether it'll be pushed or not is another question but i can see it as people would be like and all the groundwork has been set like the language that's why i was showing you like the he she they're using the the pronouns to, to like, okay, one of my identities is a male. And so they use these pronouns, but this one's a female, but she only uses these pronouns. And, and so then it's like, you have this whole complex of information that supports all of that. But then also it allows you for, it allows you to have a creative outlet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very similar to the trans point where it's like the ADHD is more of like an ailment Whereas with the trans, it's like, oh no, it's like an expression point. Mm. This allows for that, but it also gives you a really good excuse because you can be like, oh, I was late to work because so and so woke up, you know, front or you know, in the front yeah. or whatever, and they they it, it they gives, like it gives they have a this space for continuous and they have time blindness. <laughs> and and also also the thing is like it's less commitment. People did that with ADHD, isn't it? Oh, it was my it's, ADHD. Now it's like, oh, it was you know, Fred, but, you know, but it's less, com it's less commitment because think about it. Like if you go back to the nineties or early two thousands, you can see different characters within different kinds of people. There's the skaters, there's the, right. the guitar people or whatever, like people have their little niche, but now you're not just trapped by one little niche. Now you can have 10 different niches not be really that good at any of them because you have an excuse saying oh that's because these characters have been taking the show more than that character so that that skills a little rocky or whatever yeah. where it's like you're not having to fully commit to anything in life because you have all these excuses and these blame you can go into where this is why i'm subpar at life essentially yeah right what's going to happen to schools when you start, when children are starting to identify as systems, oh jeez, oh, and you have to like <laughs> on, the, on their... your name on the paper, Susan. The next day, Jacqueline. The next day, Fred. <laughs> like, it, I'm, I mean, I've done a little bit of research. There's like non-human alters. 
Mm. And we've, and see, this might be the point where, because I've, I've always talked about, I see the trans leading to the transhumanism, yeah. but I think this might be one of the necessary steps in between. Because it's like really breaking the last sense of, I am a being in myself at all. Like, it's one thing to be like, I'm a being, but I'm male and I'm in a female body. And so there's a disconnect that I need to be accommodated for. Right. I, I can see the logic there, but then it's like, there's, but that's still holding on to a point of like, it's like, you have a soul. There's a, there's a, there's something in there. That's you. Yeah. In your body. No, it's like, you're just like, a construct of your consciousness and your experience. And you're one of multiple identities. All, and who I am, who I am at this time, who I am in the metaverse, who I am in the metaverse. When I go to this place in the metaverse, who I am in the metaverse, when I go to this place in the metaverse, <laughs> who like it's all like, those it's like you look at a policeman, right? They're not that same person when they go to church. I mean, they might still retain some of those characteristics, but they're not like wearing the uniform, playing that role. And so I can see how like everyone has all these points. So it'll be like that, that perhaps next step to getting people to just be like, look, you're just a fucking I can see computer that. software in your mind. And why even identify with your body at all? Yeah. Definitely. You know? Yeah. Just forcing people to go into their minds even more right. and not be physical. Separating even more. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny because you see people with these mental illnesses and typically, well, almost always, you can see the physical effects on their body whether they have dark circles under their eyes, their skin is slightly yellow or whatever. It's like, you could see that they have physical consequence for them focusing on their mind, focusing on all these characters and all this, instead of actually focusing on supporting their physical body. Maybe they're oh, super overweight. Maybe they're super underweight. Maybe, maybe it's just small little things, but it doesn't matter. Like there's parts of their physical body that is being neglected and not, effectively support it yeah it's interesting because like all these things that we're talking about like with the trans stuff the did the osdb whatever um you have to be abused in order to accept it like regardless of like whether it's you were exposed to this stuff as a young child you didn't have anything else you know to to understand any different that's abuse or if you know you grow up and you feel like you're just not connected with your body. And then this thing comes in to give you an explanation of like, oh, it's because you're trans or because you're actually 10 people in one or whatever. It's like, and then you accept it. Again, that just comes from abuse. You know, that point you were bringing up of like how when you went to daycare and then you felt like this situation isn't right. Right. That's how most people feel. And increasingly more, it's more obvious just being in our society yeah. and that's why i see all these things starting to become they're going to become more and more prevalent because as we've been saying this since the beginning of this podcast it's like society is not structured in a way that's actually best it doesn't care about you neither is the daycare like think of the daycare as like just a small example it's not structured in a way to actually meet your needs it's like no you fucking sit there i'll give you some juice and a graham cracker like that's why to this day i don't like graham crackers and orange fucking kool-aid you know Ooh. because or I don't know what it was, some fucking mix, you know, maybe it was Tang, I don't know. Oh, okay. okay. You know what I mean? Some hey, orange drink, sense. right? Damn. Some orange drink, right? I thought um, it was Sunny D. <laughs> I don't think it was Sunny D. It was Sunny D's gross too. It was a little bit more diluted, yeah. Well, but it's like, it's yeah. not designed with you in mind at all. You know, it's just no. a system to manage you and to keep you going to the next point. So that's how I feel yeah. about goldfish crackers. Same. Mm. I was hating on all my snacks. <laughs> hey, I I buy this this like organic brand of graham crackers, mm -hmm. and I actually those smack those those are you know actually I saw smackers. I saw that uh, uh, Katie geez I can't remember <laughs> uh, Katie had made some uh, granola bars. Those looked really delicious. Those look yeah. really They're good. The kids really like them. I didn't prefer them just because you had peanut butter in them. But, God, dude, I'd love that even more. What the fuck? But objectively, they are good if you like peanut butter granola, you know, graham cracker. Hey, I learned those, I learned nice. about peanut butter that some people's bodies treat it as a kind of like a stimulant. 
as an altar but it's an edgy like it it, it creates kind of like the jittery kind of feeling irritated with everything when you eat it um yeah. and it, it's it actually peanuts. yeah well, maybe that's an allergic reaction uh just to clarify no, on the record no. i actually like peanut butter I just like it by itself, like on bread or something. I just don't like it in things. You don't like, like, mm. wait, hang on. Peanut butter I just, cups. I don't want anyone out there to be like, Cameron doesn't like peanut butter, never give him peanut butter. He can't have peanut butter. Peanut like, butter cups. Like peanut. No, I don't like peanut butter in stuff like chocolate or whatever. Wow. wow. I just like a piece of bread or toast with peanut butter on it. You Even if I have talking. a peanut butter jelly sandwich, I want them separate. I, I like, I like <laughs> peanut butter. I like peanut butter a lot. And I recently started making homemade peanut butter because I got all these raw peanuts in bulk and I've been roasting them and then turning it into peanut butter. And it's so good. And I'll put sometimes honey and like cacao in there and kind of make cool it idea, into Jess. like- I never thought about doing that. And it's it's super good. How do you how do you blend it up? Do you use a processor? Just my blender. I don't, like I don't have a, process, a food processor yet because my blend, it's a Vitamix. So it, it does a pretty damn good job. And I just put in the Vitamix and- But can you use a Vitamix as a food processor? Pretty much, yeah. Or is Pretty it just much. as a blender? No. I have a Vitamix. No, 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 no. We have one. Vitamix? Well, the Vitamix actually has a separate thing you can put on top that's for dry ingredients. So you can also like mill flour and- That's true. Mill flaxseed and different things like that. I'm wondering because our- um, In the our dry container. Oh. try using the Vitamix. It doesn't allow for as much control in how small like, like you pulsing. blend things up into. Yeah. Like yeah. pulsing isn't as good, but um, it's been sufficient enough for me to not have to get a food processor thus far. This so. part of the episode brought to you by Vitamix. Um, you, I gotta go, the, guys. The I gotta go. It's cool. Oh, okay. Thanks for sharing yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the peanut butter idea because I'm like, oh, I can make her own peanut butter. Dude, uh, I make my own peanut butter all the time. Oh, she like literally left. She's like, <laughs> I gotta go. Mitch cannot come back either. Um, I like we we. I know you know this, but we started making a uh, candied jalapenos. Dude, I saw that, and I was like, fuck. I hope there's enough for us. <laughs> like, <laughs> the thing is, the recipe I looked at, it was like this particular recipe. It was like to put like. So you put apple cider vinegar, mm -hmm. sugar, some mm -hmm. salt. I didn't have salt in it, but it had celery salt. Okay. And turmeric and like garlic or something. Ooh. And I was like, mm, I just like them when they're like sugary. Yeah, I just like them sweet. Right. So I just used the same method that they did, but I just put sugar and a little bit of salt and not much, but a little bit. And then the apple cider vinegar. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see how it goes. I think it'll turn out just fine. Like sweet yeah. jalapenos. Sounds but like I was just I like, want. what is the point of the turmeric and all that? It's like, I guess if you want it like a specific flavor kind of stuff, I don't know. So I was no. like, I'm not going to do that. Plus, I didn't have any of the celery seed, which I was just like, well, I'm just going to do sugar this time. There's not any in the ones that we get from your your town. There's no celery seed or any. It's just. Right. I, that's what happened. I, eventually, I looked at the jar. And I was like, what's in the one I have? And it was yeah. just sugar and salt. And I was like, okay, I'm just doing that. Because I, right. I was like, do we need to do all the turmeric? I'm like, that's not, that sounds like some specific thing. Yeah. So, but you, but you're supposed to like, so now here's the thing. It said to put it in the fridge for three to four weeks. Okay. But I'm like, do I have to do that if I'm doing like the turmeric and all that stuff? I'm not sure. So. Katie was like, well, just do it. Just leave it in there. Because we still have some from somewhere else. So we'll Dude, see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'll taste delicious. I'll, I'll come over and try it. That <laughs> was my candied jalapeno altar speaking. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? Um, the other day, I left to go somewhere. I don't remember where. But when I came back, our neighbor, um, she's always out on the balcony. And she's been for the last few months now um whenever she sees christine she would just yell out hi hazel because she, she stopped christine one time and asked her if she was expecting and this is like an older black woman she smokes literally three packs of cigarettes a day i'm not even i don't think i'm joking like literally she will be out there for hours and you'll you'll just go outside and 
there'll just be a cloud of smoke and she's up at like 5 a.m starting smoking we're like how like i got work to do <laughs> that that is her work and then, and then she's always on the phone out there it's it's hilarious she's loud but it, it's it's funny because um every time she would see us like she would just wave at us hey baby hi nerd hi hazel like right and the other day she saw me and she saw me like, like macy from, gray i don't know who macy gray is you know the singer oh anyways no but uh but she like she saw me from a while later. from a while away and she waited for me like she's like standing on the edge of her balcony waiting for me like i could see her like she's <laughs> waving me down i'm like hey i come over and she's like um say baby coming any moment now you, you waiting on the baby and i was like uh no the baby's here and she's like oh baby she, oh she got from the hospital said no we had the baby at home had the baby at home had the baby at home on purpose <laughs> I was like yes on purpose so that's what the doctor was here for the doctor and the nurse that's I what that it. fucking noise was last night <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, we did it on purpose. The doctor's here. The doctor said she's fine. She's like, wow. Well, tell, tell your wife I said hello and congratulations. I was like, okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> but it, it's really cool because. Um, I like how it's like on purpose. <laughs> I've actually told a few people, you know, we did a home birth and their first question was on purpose. Like, do people do this shit on accident? Like, <laughs> That'd be like, if you're like, yeah, um, you know, let's say you're homeschooling your kids and they're like, on purpose <laughs> it'd, it'd be like i just forgot to take him to school and i started teaching him calculus <laughs> it'd be like you ran a marathon like on purpose <laughs> like, <laughs> well i would have to ask that like why the fuck else <laughs> yeah no no but it's been great it's been great um i will say this it was a uh, very intimate uh and exactly what we wanted as far as um the birth of our child or, or the the first moments of her life in in this world and uh man it, it's it's cool like like you said like homeschooling your child like we're, we're doing it, it takes more responsibility to have a home birth um but if you actually want like you know, i understand some people there are complications that come up all sorts of things right where a hospital may be necessary for some but as far as like planning it out like people don't even plan to you know have a home birth they, they plan to go to the hospital and like it's they'll even like with school it's like you just of course you're putting your kids in school right is it right. Really considered as an option right exactly that exactly that it's just like you know in order to do a home birth we had to take on more responsibility which meant christine was educating herself so fucking much watching hmm like <laughs> almost like that's the problem here <laughs> yeah yeah right but but she was able to like learn literally everything and i would i would come up to her and i'd be like because she was the one who was educating herself she's the one who's going to get birth but i'd come up to her and i'd be like you know i have this this fear and she's like oh i already walked through that fear and i'm like what <laughs> she's like yeah i looked it up here are all the possible things that could happen that way and it's this this and this and, you know, I looked at my fear of that possibly happening, but if that were to happen, then this is what we would do. And like, holy shit, like that is cool, you know, to be able to face your fears. And that was one of the things that like the, the midwife was suggesting was you should look at what fears you have in this process before we get to the point where you're having, you know, you're in labor and then all the fears are coming up and you don't, you're, you're freaking out, you know, because you're, you're afraid. Um, and I was, I was just thinking of that because it's like you said, it's just like, people are just going to put their kids in school. They're well, not, a lot of the people who I've talked to who tried to do home births didn't do that. Mm. They just treated it like you're just going to go to the doctor, you know? And so I'm not saying they didn't do anything, but they didn't really apply themselves like within the process that we talk about, you know? And I know Katie yeah. did a lot of that, right? Obviously, you know, yeah. so it, it makes a difference. So it's kind of like with the school point. Yeah. If you just are like, well, we're just going to homeschool our kids. And then that's it. And then you think day one, this is going to be like, you have to direct the point. 
yeah. you know, but what we're trying to show with techno tutor is like with our kids, we're not schooling them. We're just giving them the vocabulary and supporting them and exposing them to cool stuff and letting them. And then we talk about it. We know we're always talking and nothing is ever surprising to me that they know it. You know, I'm not like, what, how did Max learn chemistry? It's like, well, I bought him the books and I bought them, you know, it's always it, cool it's when still, you see it. But. It's still really impressive. You know, just like, just the fact that he can sit there with a the book and just come back and be like, okay, so <laughs> let me tell you about all this stuff that I learned. And you're like, what? <laughs> I bought, I bought a bunch of books recently, but three of them came at one time and they're, you know, novel form for mm -hmm nine to 12 year olds okay and Seneca's already read them and she'll tell you all about what's in it and I look at the back and I'm like that's a lot more detail than what's on the back yeah wow. you know wow. and so like now I'll we'll, we'll find her just like in the room and like in the living room in her bedroom she'll just be sitting there reading for like an hour that's like so cool. not picture books yeah and she'll be five in October that's so cool that's you so know? cool. And again, none of this was spontaneous. None of this was, well, they just were readers. Like every step of the way, we've supported the development of their vocabulary to the point where now it's obvious why, you know. You know, what's what's funny is I have come across people who their kids were hyperlexic, like spontaneous, you know, hyperlexia, where, and, I, you know, some of them that I've met, like their kids are clearly autistic as well, you know, where they're just like very irritable you have to do what they're saying and they, they don't want to, they don't want to do anything outside of their routine or whatever it is. Um, they're dysfunctional. Yes. Yes. And then others of them, like, uh, they didn't have that. But when I asked the, the parents, like, so, okay, you know, your kid reads, how, how is that? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, what are you going to do with your other kid? They have another kid that's like younger or something like that. And what are you going to do with them? I don't, it's not happening. I don't know what to do. With right. This. Right. It's not like it happens again. Right. That's why it's very rare that that occurs. Extremely right. rare. It's it's interesting how, how that works. And, and, and so, so we're not leaving it up to chance. <laughs> exactly. Exactly that. We're not leaving it up to chance because um, a lot of times. Like, okay. Could there be some kid who's born a chess genius? Okay, sure. Yeah. Potentially, like they just yeah. start picking up the patterns and no one taught there's, them anything. There's like three but year olds. Are there happens. a lot more kids who are really good at chess because from a young age they were taught how to play chess and they played chess and like they didn't just spontaneously. Right. Right. Even, even even if like someone's born, quote unquote, a chess genius, somebody has to show them chess. Right. Them but my point being, like, that's not replicatable. Right. So you you wouldn't have another kid that's just born a chess. I mean, I'm not saying it's not fit possible theoretically but it's not what's going to happen right so we're not doing that we didn't just like oh our kid's really smart okay cool like wow that was great like yeah we've been using techno tutor before they were born <laughs> right right that's what that's what people don't get like and you know it's, it's uh not uh trying to call them stupid or anything i'm just saying like that's where our responsibility comes in it's like how, how are they supposed to get that how are they I mean, these stupid people that don't get it are just hypothetical anyways. We're just imagining these people who don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> They're just in our minds. But the point is, let's say there's somebody out there who doesn't get it. Yeah, they don't get right, it. Right, right. It's like, they, they just have to be directed. That's all. It's like, we, we have to get, and it's the same thing within ourselves. Here's what I wanted to share before we wrap up, because I know we've got to, we got to go. <laughs> like, yeah. Soon. But what I wanted to share was this, I was listening again and I don't know why, but I, I just felt the urge to listen again to the will to forgive, right? And I was listening to that and it, it really hit differently this time because he's explaining, Bernard's explaining this point of free will. Right. And as he's, he's, he's basically saying like, you know, self-will, you, you got to have self-will. You have to will yourself. And if you don't, it like, he, he keeps bringing up the phrase, uh, thy will be done. 
right? Well, actually your will is being done because you're allowing your mind to direct you. You're, you're allowing that to happen so that you can continue getting your quote unquote free will. But even as he's like explaining free will, like I, I realize, like, oh, I, I see free will differently. Like free it's will still to your me. will. It's just you've automated. But hang on, hang on. Free will is a scam. That is a con, actually. Free will. Like look at just the name of free will. Like it's, it's like to get you to buy into it. It's like because Bernard keeps bringing up this point of um you oh know, yeah like a free choice like you just get this choice for nothing like exactly there's no, there's no cost exactly exactly it's and so he, he keeps bringing up the point of it's free will and you you say you have free will and you convince others that they have free will so that you can continue holding on to your free will right it's it's like oh it's you, want, just, you 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 want to accept the concept of free will so you don't have to actually exercise free will right right and and so it's super interesting just seeing that is like that in itself is a scam that I was, and it's, it's almost made to sound like, um, like when you're asked, do you have free will? You, you automatically want to say, yes, of course, of course, I'm free to will myself, however, but then it, it's turned into this philosophical or does God ordain it or, or this? Or, do we have free will? And that's like uh, completely beside the point, completely beside the point where the real question you should be asking is, are you directing yourself effectively? Like, are, is, is it actually you making these decisions and you're deciding I'm going to do this and then you stick with it and you make it happen? Even if or, it's automated. Yeah. Did or you put that automation into place on purpose. Right, 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 right. Or are you just going along with, Oh, this this bright idea just came out of nowhere, and I feel like doing this at this moment. And I don't feel like doing this at that moment, and so I'm I'm gonna do the things I feel like. I'm not gonna do right. the things I don't feel like, and, and you're just kind of going along. And I oh, I just can't help myself. Oh, I I just I, is that is that you? Because then in that case, you don't have free will. You, you're not, excuse me. You don't have self will, right? You're not directing yourself, and that has been just like really cool again to listen to. And just look at those points of where am I or where are we abdicating our will? Where are we, like, in, in a sense, um, just allowing, allowing the circumstances to be what they are and just kind of saying, blaming on something else you know uh you know it's this it's that whatever but then not actually taking it back to what have i allowed to create these conditions um and you know i'm not going to be able to explain it's an hour and a half long audio go listen to it but a lot of the context that's given is actually really good because it's circumstances that are like relationships and things that you would you would generally the average person would say, I don't have any control over that. I couldn't control that other person or whatever. But it's like how you participate in that, you're participating in it. You know, like even, even like, okay, you're having a thought that you don't want to have. Why does it keep coming up? Because you participate in it. If you want the thought to stop, stop participating in the thought. It's like with all the DID stuff and all that. It's like they're yeah. actively participating in it. Same thing yes. with all of these points. Yes. Yes. Um, and I can understand, I can understand why it would be a challenge to stop, just stop. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to stop participating in these thoughts. You think I want to have these thoughts? I can understand that. But that's why we have the tools that we have and the community and the support and the education and all of it so that you can do that. And it's the same way, just like I'm going to tie this back into the home burn. It's like <laughs> you can educate yourself to do that effectively. Or you can just kind of like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna run into it and, and just do it and like, oh, it didn't work. Oh, it just right. wasn't for me. Or, or well, like, I've heard a lot of that. It wasn't for me and all that, yeah. You know? So, like, no, you didn't. Yeah. Exactly, it's, it, or, or like putting your kid in, in daycare. Well, not everybody can do it. It's like, did you even look at like why you'd want to be home with your kids or why you 
maybe might not want to put your kid in daycare, like actually look at it and what are the benefits you're getting out of this? What, are, what, are you, what do you think your perceived pros are versus the cons? And then, and then like, that's in your mind. Let's match that up with reality. It, and it's this education process. And again, we, it's so cool what we do. I'm so, I, I, want, I wanted to say please, but that's not really the, I, I, I really appreciate what we do because it's actually the solution. You actually have to educate yourself. And it's not just this point of like, if I were to teach you algebra and then you can't do it, you're not educated, I'm sorry. You could say you went to school, you took those classes, whatever, but it's not even about the classes or anything. It's, can you educate yourself? Can you learn? Are, are, you, are you open to change? Like, are you, when you're in this position, can you adapt? And most people, 99.99999% of people, the answer is no. And we have, I've seen for myself, I thought I was adaptable. I thought I was one of these adaptable people. And then I learned like, holy shit, there was all this thing, all these things within myself that I thought were just who I am and permanent structures of my personality. And I've completely changed those things, which is how I've been able to have the relationship that I have now, the child that I have now, like the, the, the family, the support, the community, like all of this is because I changed those things I thought were immutable, you know? Um, and, and that's a result of this process of the tools that we're using, this community that we have. And so again, just sharing this because it's like, okay, I did it for myself, it's really cool. And now I see the value for others to do this, especially because it's not just gonna support them, but it's also gonna support my future children, my child now and, and future children as well. And um, that's what we're here to do. I know we gotta wrap like now, but. I agree, yeah. Yeah. Well said. And so, uh, I guess we'll see you guys next week on the next one. All right. Bye everybody. Bye.